It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, January 15, 2024. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day to one and all. If you are at home and you are freezing, uh, please come join us for the next three and a half or so hours if you're out and about. Uh, doing what you need to do on a Monday. Thank you for joining us. And as always, we we try our best to uh, represent and live up to the words and the wisdom of the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It is a great day to be alive. It is a great time uh, to be a fight fan. It was a very fun weekend in the world of combat sports. There is so much to be excited about. And literally minutes ago uh, in London, the very first Francis Ngannou Anthony Joshua press conference just wrapped up. There's a whole host of news regarding everything going on with that card, with the February 17th card, with the Bellator PFL card, a lot going on and a lot to discuss and digest and break down. Also, in addition to all of that, my beloved Buffalo Bills are playing at 4.30 Eastern time in about three and a half hours from now, usually three and a half hours before a Bills playoff game, uh, my stomach is in knots and I'm just counting down the minutes. This will provide a distraction, but it will also mean that will be done by 4.30 so I can at least watch the first half here and then jet home, hopefully in good spirits. The game was supposed to happen yesterday, but the snow had other plans. The right call, of course. No one wants to be driving and dealing with that. I mean, did you see those scenes? People calling the city of Buffalo soft is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Maybe the toughest, most um, resilient people in all of America. The right calls. And by the way, if it wasn't for the governor, they would have they would have probably showed up regardless. Look at these, look at these brave volunteers shoveling Highmark Stadium. Just, I mean, doing their best. It's an amazing thing. I can't wait. Bills Mafia, let's go. 4:30. So a lot to get to. We have so much to discuss. Fantastic show. As always, we are presented by our good friends over at DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with the code DMMAR because life's more fun when you're in on the action. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem call 100 Gambler. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See DraftKings. Dot com for details. Also, thank you very much to our good friends over at BetterHelp. I'll tell you more about them later in the program. Now, back into the show, we'll recap the weekend that was as far as uh, the Parlay Boys and GC are concerned. Uh, prior to that, we are going to be joined by one Brandon Moreno. You may have heard late last week, uh, he is no longer fighting Amir Albazi. He is now fighting Brandon Royville. Uh, that is going down in February in Mexico City. Uh, this is a, a pretty important fight in the uh, in the flyweight division. Of course, they met uh, back in 2020. They have a history. Moreno beat him, uh, and uh, this is an opportunity for him to get back on track and uh, to potentially plant his flag once again in that flyweight division. Al Bazi out, and so we'll talk to Brandon Moreno about all that and more. Prior to that. Drickus Duplessis, you may have heard of him, DDP. He is headlining UFC 297 this Saturday in Toronto, the first UFC show in Toronto in um, a little over four years. 2019 was the last time they were there. Massive fight for him, fighting for the middleweight title against Sean Strickland. Obviously, a lot of bad blood will be checking in with the pride of South Africa, Drickus Duplessis, at around... 2.30 Eastern. Prior to that, Yuri Prochaska, in one of his first interviews since his loss in New York City at Madison Square Garden to Alex Pereira uh, back in November. Of course, we found out recently he's returning April 13th against Alexander Rakic. He'll join us uh, to talk about everything and the state of his career, light heavyweight division, which of course was in focus this past weekend with Magomed Ankalaev versus Johnny Walker. So we'll get into that with one of my favorites, Yuri Prochaska. And in about five minutes' time, for the very first time in my career, I got the opportunity to speak to AJ, Anthony Joshua. And, you know, I was thinking about this this morning. I've been lucky enough, especially in the world of MMA, to talk to everyone 
who I've ever wanted to speak to at one point or another from all the power players to all the fighters. I don't think there's a single one that I haven't talked to. And I'm incredibly grateful and appreciative and blessed to be in that position. As we make our way into the world of boxing, a couple of big scoops today, shout out. Uh, there are many who I've talked to as well in the world of boxing from Manny to Floyd to uh, Tyson and uh, Katie Taylor and so many others, Clarissa Shields, et cetera. Anthony Joshua is, is on the very short list at this point of people in combat sports, and I'll throw pro wrestling in that mix too, uh, who I haven't had the opportunity to talk to. And one of my favorite fighters to watch and also listen to interviews um, from him over the last decade plus uh, since the Olympics in 2012. So it's a great privilege and excitement for me to have him on the show in about a few minutes. Uh, they just got off the stage in London and he's going to be joining us for a few minutes to talk about the big fight on March 8th in Saudi Arabia. So uh, stay tuned for that. But like I said, a huge weekend. UFC back on Saturday. Magomed Ankalaev knocks out Johnny Walker in the second round. Hard to argue with him not having some sort of say in the light heavyweight proceedings. Um, if they do, in fact, do Jamal Hill versus Alex Pereira, I would think he would be either next or one win away. Uh, if Jamal needs more time, Achilles is a very serious injury. I can see them doing Magomed versus Alex Pereira right now. I definitely think that Rakic and Prochaska are in the mix. And I definitely think that Khalil Roundtree needs to be in the mix as well. So all of a sudden, the division that was in flux, that seemed cursed, that seemed quite shallow now has a very dominant champion, a very exciting champion, and a bit of a queue of contenders. And that was exactly the kind of win and performance I think that Magomed Ankalaev needed. Uh, he needed that after the last two fights, you know, the draw in late 2022 and then the weird ending to the Johnny Walker fight in October. He needed that kind of performance to say, all right, great winning streak, great unbeaten streak. I'm the guy. You need to get by me. I need a shot. Let's do it. And it seems like Alex Pereira is into it because not only did uh, Glover Teixeira respond, um, but I think in some way, shape, or form, Alex did as well via social media. Hard to keep up with it all. And so that was impressive. Jim Miller winning once again, impressive, uh, defeating Mowgli Benitez. That was super impressive. And later on that night, and we're going to talk more about all of this, have no fear, but later on that night uh, over in Quebec City, I told you guys to watch the Arter Better Biev versus Calum Smith fight. It was fantastic. And I also mentioned Christian and Billy fighting in the co-main event, a man to watch. I don't think he gets the likes of Canelo Alvarez next, a little too unknown, but golly, this guy sitting in the pocket and just throwing power shots was supremely fun to watch. And uh, shout out to his opponent, Murdoch, who uh, stood there and took all those shots, but golly, could have made a case for that fight ending a couple rounds sooner. Today at the press conference for Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou, uh, His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh says that he wants Dmitry Bivol versus Arter Bedebiev in June, and so we'll see if they if they are able to get that done. Speaking of June in Saudi Arabia, I can tell you exclusively here on the show that I'm being told via sources that the planned March 2nd UFC event in Saudi Arabia is being postponed, and the target is June. I was told that the reason for the postponement is because. Uh, they just want the powers that be in Saudi Arabia want a, how should we put it? Uh, they want, they want a more entertaining fight card. They want a deeper fight card with bigger names on it. Uh, weren't too pleased with what was being offered. And so it is being at this point moved to later in the year, June. And the moment I heard about this, uh, made me think of the post from Islam Khachev last week who said June 8th pay-per-view. Remember I said he didn't just pull that out of his hat. He must have known something. And so that makes all the sense in the world. Islam Khachev fighting in Saudi Arabia uh, on June 8th, potentially against the Justin Gaethje. Saudi Arabia was never going to accept a lesser card to what uh, you know Abu Dhabi is getting or anyone else is getting. Just look at what they're doing in the world of boxing. And so I always found it a little bit surprising that it was just being billed as a fight night. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a pay-per-view. That part I don't know, and the Islam part I don't know. I'm just trying to put the pieces together. But what I do know is the March 2nd card looking like it's not going to happen on March 2nd, and this back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back 
stretch of fights that I talked about from the 17th to the 8th. Looks like there might be an opening there. Um, and it will happen later on, potentially in the year, in uh, June. I suspect later on this week, perhaps even as soon as tomorrow, we will find out more about the Bellator PFL fight card that is going to be a champion versus champion. And, and not just champion versus champion, but star versus star. Featuring some, you know, some up-and-comers, some stars. Uh, it's not just champion versus champion, but uh, the majority of them are going to be fighting. Um, and that will be the first offering under the new PFL regime now that they have uh, acquired Bellator. So a lot to process and a lot going on, obviously, in, uh, in that corner of the world. And uh, even at the press conference today which we will uh, talk to Anthony Joshua about. There was a big announcement uh, regarding this undisputed title. It's almost like they're creating their own promotion and uh, that this is going to be up for grabs. I think some people may have misunderstood that it's going to be up for grabs for AJ and Francis. My understanding was that the winner of that fight is going to fight um, the winner of the Fury Usyk fight, which is February 17th. And what a day February 17th is going to be Fury Usyk. And then, you know, later on in the evening, 298 Volkanovsky to Poria, those two fights on the same day is wild. But then the winner of the March 8th fight gets to fight the winner of the February 17th fight. How does this affect this rematch clause that's being discussed? Who knows? It's, it's all very fresh and new. Uh, but all very fascinating to watch unfold. It truly is. So I'm looking forward to this very much, and I'm looking forward to talking to Anthony Joshua, who, uh, of course, burst onto the scene in 2012, uh, winning a gold medal at the London Olympic Games, signs with Matchroom, and, you know, for the longest time, the face of not only boxing in the UK, but heavyweight boxing, and you could have made a case for boxing period, especially as he became heavyweight champ not once but twice. Uh, obviously, the last time he fought in uh, Saudi Arabia prior to December of this past year at the uh, Day of Reckoning card, it didn't go well against Alexander Usyk, but he comes back last year, and not only does he win once, not only does he win twice, he wins three times in the span of eight months. He, he beats Jermaine Franklin in April. He beats... Robert Hellenius in August, and then he beats Otto Wallin in uh, late December, December 23rd. And so this will mark his fourth fight in less than a year, in 11 months, which is pretty remarkable for someone of his stature and, uh, you know, everything that he's accomplished. And that's what's happening here. These, these fight cards are being put together, you know, very quickly. And uh, some, you know, big names are being put on them. Uh, I reported today that Zhile Zhang and Joseph Parker are going to fight in the co-main event slot, which, you know, these are fight cards and these are fights that weren't happening. Uh, these guys would get their own fight cards back in the day. And so if you're a, a, a big time boxing fan, this has to be quite exciting for you. And uh, I can't wait for it. Like just seeing those two, I think we have the, uh, the face off. Do we have that? Just seeing those two guys. There's something about it. Here it is. Moments ago, Francis and Anthony Joshua. There's Eddie Hearn in between them. Look at that. There's something, Eddie was right. He said this last week. Like, there's just something about that face off. I think it was Eddie who said it. Just because they are chiseled and they're, they're gigantic, to see these two guys feels almost as, if not more, surreal than when we saw Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury just a few months ago face off. So like I said, I've never had the opportunity to speak to Anthony Joshua. I've wanted to speak to him for quite some time. This is a massive, massive honor. Very, very exciting. Let us say hello to the one and only, the two-time heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua, my man, AJ. How are you, sir? Thank you so much for doing this. It's a great honor to finally speak to you. It's an honor to speak to you as well. And um, I've listened to your interviews and... There are things that you've asked, did AJ say this? And now we finally get to have uh, uh, artificial intelligence face-to-face. -face. Okay, yes. One of these days, <laughs> I would love to do it in person, but uh, I'll take what I could get. Is there something... Where in are you now? I'm in New York City. New York, New York City. York, yeah? yeah. You okay. coming by? 
Not right now. I'm in training camp. I'm locked down. All right. I feel you. And can I just say, AJ, off the bat, I have watched your your uh, your mini documentary with Louis Theroux three times. Uh, <laughs> you and him were so on point, and uh, the rapport that you guys had and the questions he asked you, and, and really what we saw from you was I felt a different side. It was so enjoyable, so kudos to you on that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, can can I ask you? It's how like, uh, UK media can transition now over to the States, and, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to know that it's what we're doing in the UK is – reaching a global market. The work is paying off. Amen. And uh, there's no one better than Louis, in my opinion. Can I ask you about one thing you said in that piece? Uh, you said that the sport don't always love you back. The sport of boxing doesn't always love you back. Do you feel now with the paydays, with the opportunities, with the, the stage that you are getting, that the sport is starting to finally love you back? <laughs> I, I did that. <laughs> that's, not, I, that's not the sport. I, I want my... I work my behind off. Yeah. I work hard to, to put myself in a certain position. But in a sense, when I say the sport don't love you back, like, unfortunately, in this game, you know, not everyone can be a Muhammad Ali. Not everyone can be a Mike Tyson. And unless you are those, the sport don't love you back. You're here today and gone tomorrow. It's like the flavor of the month. And you just have to be aware of that. When, good, when times are good, don't get too comfortable. And when times are bad, don't get too comfortable. Just keep balanced and you'll go through life at, in, at a good pace. Have you always had that perspective or is that something you had to learn? I think I've always had that perspective. I always say like, I've always been this way, way before, you know, I was an old head before I was an old head. You know, I had a wise head on my shoulders from a young age. Is that, is that Femi? Is, is Femi the, the, the old head? <laughs> what do you know about Femi? I mean, I'm trying to learn more. I like Femi. Femi seems like a cool guy. I'm trying to talk to Deji. I'm trying to talk to the whole family. <laughs> I want to get in with the AJs, with the Joshua. One, one day I'm going to bring you over. I want, one you know, day. I'm big in Watford, by the way. They love me down there. I'll be coming to New York City soon as well. I'm going to come and hit you up. All right. I love that. Um, so you just, you just finished this face off with the big man. Did you, did you take anything away from him? Did you read any, like, is there anything that you can walk away with after seeing Francis face to face? Mm, not really. I, I'm never kind of look at a face to face and think like they're scared or they're ready because the fight is its own is its own drama in itself. So, you know, I've seen like fighters look away first and gone out and put a whooping on their opponent or whatever it is. But he he's ready. He's a fighter. That's just what I know with or without a face off. I don't have to do a face off to know what type of person he is. I've researched him. I've listened to your interviews as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I understand, I understand his mentality. So, yeah, um, I just know what I need to know about him way before the face up. We're not beefing, though, right? You don't, Do you have any problems with anything that I've said? Because you've referenced it twice now. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say it if I didn't. We're not beefing, but let's say we have got beef until you prove me otherwise. What? Really? What did I? You know, yeah, I think we're, we're, so. we've got beef. Wow. What did I say that offended you? Uh, I think... I just want you to believe in me, and I'm going to prove it to you on March the 8th. I love that. Can I tell you something, Anthony? Um, after the second Usyk fight, my, my heart genuinely broke for you, and I hated, oh, the, I, I hated the way the UK media and the UK fans were kicking you while you were down. And in fact, I was, no love. I was in London, and I did a bunch of medias. It was like two days after your fight, and I said, no it, it, it blows me away how they don't back you how they disrespect you, how they kick you while you're down. What more could you do for this country and for this scene and for this sport in the country? And I, I've had your back since then, but long before that. So please, you know, Francis is an MMA guy. We got, But I, I've had your back, and I'll send you that clip. And a lot of people gave me shit for that, saying that you were done. Let's squash the beef, man. It's a new year. Let's put it behind go. us and Let's move go. forward. Let's go, AJ. I'm going to hug you right nah, now. Nah, nah, well, I'm, I'm in fight mode. Okay, I'm gonna right, give you right, one I'll give you one of these. I'll give you one of these. <laughs> can, can I ask you, though? I don't, you can't, we can't get too friendly. I don't know what you're saying when I'm not looking. Nah, come on. I'm, as, <laughs> I'm straight. I'm straight as a paperclip. All right. Let, let, me, let me ask you this, AJ. The, <laughs> <laughs> the guy who was sitting on that dais in uh, Saudi Arabia in August of 2022, you were very emotional, yeah. and it was really hard to see you in that state, truthfully. Yeah. Could he have ever imagined that the next year and a half would go down like this, that you would be able to turn things around like this? You want to put a hand on my heart? I did because... You know, when you study the history of boxing or history in general, it's always got peaks and troughs, highs and lows. That's just the balance of life. Um, 
you know, I ride a wave, I dip a bit, I ride a wave. It's just how life goes. That's what living's about. So I've always known that that's just how it is. And I knew I'll rise again. And here we are. It's, it's It only stops when I stop. Mm. And um, I'm still going strong. I've still got a lot more life left in me. So perhaps you say that with a bit of perspective, but was there any moment in the immediate aftermath of that fight where you were like, you know what? I don't need this anymore. I'm done with this. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. I was like, what's next? And that's when I start strategizing about my training team. What I'm going to do, I'm looking to fight in my mind. I'm like, I've got about four months to get, well, a month to get this right because I want to fight in the next three months. So I need to speak with my coach, speak with another coach, start rearranging things and reconstruct my team. Look, I'm at war. I put myself on a on a sentence. Judge Judy, bang. You are sentenced to X amount of time to boxing. Your life is committed. Whether you're up or down, you've got to keep on striving and finding a way through. And no matter what happens, I'm committed to the sport until a certain time, until my release date. And um, that's what I'm going to commit myself to. So, yeah, I never looked at another direction. This is all I know. From every ounce in my body, fighting is just all I know. Uh, when does that sentence end? I can't tell you that, my man. Uh, you, you know, you. It, you know, you have an age or a date or a year in your in your mind. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I can't do it forever. Right. I can't do it forever, unfortunately. So I have to kind of, and that's why you have to say the sport don't love you back. You have to know when it's time. No one should tell you when it's time. You have to know that when it's time to kind of step aside. So um, I'm just a realist. I know about the game. You know. Um, I watch all those uh, American gangster documentaries. You know, you've got to know when to leave the game. Yes. Have you you've got to know when to leave the game. As a youngster, did you ever watch fighters stick around too long and say to yourself, I'm not going to be that guy? Like, do you remember thinking that even before this journey started? Um, I think the only one I would say, but this is the thing, I don't call it stick around too long. I think if you're passionate, mm. just because you take a few L's, does that mean you should stop? It just means that you've got passion for the game. And I love to see people that keep on fighting for more. But the only person I can really remember was Roy Jones Jr., who, um, you know, who they said should have retired uh, a bit earlier on. But they, the guy's still involved in boxing till, till now. And uh, it just shows that he's passionate about it, whether he's fighting, whether he's winning, whether he's losing. I just think he's just born to fight. James Tony still right. fighting. You right. Know? The Ruddock, he's, it's just in our DNA. When, when Deontay Wilder lost on December 23rd, in the back of your mind, did you think, all right, it's going to be Francis, or did you have to be convinced to go this route? So I thought it might be Wilder still because the contracts were signed. Um, and it's still a big fight. It's still an amazing fight. Um, it's a crossover between the UK and the USA, all that good stuff promotional-wise. Still a good fight. Um, so now I kind of let that one slide for a bit, and it was like... The Hergovic situation, the Ruiz situation, and then they put Francis there. And um, my team were like, this is a good opportunity on this day in Saudi Arabia against this opponent. What are you saying? I said, let's roll. Let's go. And and you'll be with Ben Davison by your side? Yes, sir. I spoke to Derek, a good dialogue. He gets it. As much as I want to, you know, be out there with, 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 uh, with you guys, I'm from the UK. And uh, we're good here. We're working hard. Um, Derek knows Ben Davison's a great trainer and I'm in good hands. So aside from just training me, he wants to make sure I'm in good hands. And, you know, he gave the green light. So we're all good to go. I think this is a dream pairing. I hope you and Ben stay so, together for the rest of your career. I think so highly of him. Is this a fight-by-fight -fight basis or are you now sticking with him from here on out? No, how I am. I might change my mind next week. <laughs> <laughs> A little stability is good for the soul, no? Very good. My team are going to bolt my boots down in that gym and I'm going to get cracked. I love it. I love it. And 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 for you to fight a, a another fighter of African descent, right? He he has done such great things for Cameroon, Francis. I know you want to beat him and I know he's trying to take something that you want as well, but is there some pride, you know, to fight? I know you're very proud of your, your African heritage as well. Uh, you representing Nigeria, him, Cameroon. Is there some pride to be fighting a fellow African fighter? There is, but right now, no lives matter. This is a straight war, I'll be real with you. It's just war, we're at war. This isn't like, they say there's no friends at war. So I respect the guy, as you said, he's done well, all that good stuff, but we're, we're fighting and I'm, I have to get my mind in tune for what's about to happen. Do you respect him as a boxer? Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's always wanted to be a boxer. He's got a stand-up game. 
he uh, and I, yeah, I respect him as a boxer, definitely. Yeah, I have to. Is is part of the motivation? Let me beat him better than Fury did. Let me stop him because Fury couldn't. Not at all. Not at all. Because me and Fury are completely different. I'm just going to do exactly what I need to do, and I'm just going to focus on myself. The minute I start focusing on what Fury done, I've already lost the fight. I've already put myself at a disadvantage. If I just focus on what I'm good at and do what I do, I'm, I'm putting myself at an advantage. So I'm avoiding any Fury relations of what he done and so on and so forth. But uh, let me tell you this. Please. Every opponent that me and Fury have in con common, I've either stopped or knocked out. Including Otto Valin just recently. Yeah, correct. Okay. So let's see. Um, your man, Eddie Hearn, said... <laughs> he said this was easy Don't work. Don't worry about what Eddie said. He Don't said easy work, easy said. money. Do you Don't agree? Don't worry about what Eddie said. There's no easy fight. There's no easy fight. <laughs> Why is he saying this? Why is he saying this? He said easy money. He believes in me. Yeah, he that's believes right. in me. I like that. I've like never that. seen like, someone on X Factor that can't sing, but their parents believe in them. <laughs> like Eddie, Eddie's my guy. Like Through thick and thin, he believes in me. Do you know what I'm saying? So he's always going to back me. Why, why wouldn't he? I love it. But you know, there's yeah. one thing to say, I back him, great fight. It's another thing to say, ah, easy money. This is going to be a walloping. He believes in me. Yeah. And I, yeah, he just believes in me. He yeah. believes in me. Have you ever felt that? And I'm going to let you go in two minutes. I, I know we're tight on time here. This is such a pleasure. I wish we could do this for an hour. But uh, I've, had a, I've been enjoying the conversation. I appreciate that. Has, has, have you ever felt like he didn't believe in you at any point in your journey? Um, no, I think he thought what's this guy doing? And it was around the first Usyk fight. He he saw a change in, in my strategy and style and my development as a fighter, but I took it upon myself to do that. And um, now he walked into the changing room before the Walling fight and he said, what the beep beep is going on? We are back. <laughs> I love it. And and I, I love yeah. I love the yeah. loyalty you have towards him as well. Like you won't even talk That's to the Queensberry guys. I love that. That's kind. Of, I like that. You yeah, know what? We I'm can't mess with those guys. I wanted them to reference him as a Hall of Fame promoter, but they didn't. But I thought I'm not going to cause any any drama today. I'm going to let it slide. <laughs> but yeah, Eddie's a Hall of Fame promoter in my opinion. He's guiding me from zero to up up to now, and um, one of the best in the game. And he's trying to take over the market globally. I, I really respect him. Have you been told? Explicitly, you win this fight, you will fight for the undisputed title next. It was announced at the press conference today, but nothing contractually. But um, it was announced at the press conference today. So, but let me say this again: I'm not focusing on that. I, I'm going to take my mind. You know, I have to draw it back that Ungandu is my undisputed title fight. That's the mentality I have to have. Ungandu is my undisputed fight because you're only as good as your last fight. So, and I, and I respect him a lot, you know. He ain't easy money. He's a hard night's work. And you know what's crazy? Mm. So am I. Amen. I'm a hard night's work for anyone. So let's go. It's going to be uh, fireworks. Especially this version of AJ. Oh, my gosh. I got goosebumps now talking about all this. This is incredible. <laughs> Seeing how happy you are, oh, the you, smile. You, you've been going some stick. Now you've got me on the phone. What, what do you mean? What, what, what do you want me to say about him? What do you want me to say? Like, like whatever you say about me. I don't say, but listen, Eddie's coming on here and he's ragging our guy. I had to stick up for the MMA guy, but I got love. I got love. I got mad love. Remember what it is. I got mad yeah, love yeah. for AJ and especially this version of AJ. Happy F the doubters, F the I'm haters. Not happy. You're not happy. Sorry. I'm smiling. Happy. You're smiling. That's right. I hope, we, I hope we see. Have we ever seen Femi in the ring? Has it always? Have, I hope we see Femi in the ring. That's what I hope. I want to see that version of you in the ring. I don't, you know, wearing the, wearing the bad luck Adidas shirt. You know what I'm talking about? So you could just lose everyone. You lose the crowd. Forget about the crowd. Forget about everyone. Just go out there and perform. Let's win. Let's go to war. Let's okay. go to war. Last question for Stop. you, AJ. Last question. Most yeah. important question of all. What are you listening to when you have the AirPod? You always have the AirPod on no, the table. I'm what are you telling you that. I'm, you? I'm dying to know. You're very observant. <laughs> yes. What you, AirPod? What AirPod? Well, you always got it there. And by the way, AJ. What AirPod? I heard you're making a lot of money. You need the new AirPod. You got the old one. You got the long one, AJ. <laughs> Come on. You're making 50 million. You need this one, AJ. Hey, I'm broke, baby. <laughs> I'm broke. What are you listening to in there? What is it? Motivational music? What is I'm it? I'm telling you. I'm not telling you. You meditate? You listening to Central C? That's my guy, Central. See, you know that? 
She don't listen I'm to UK saying. rap. You know what I'm talking? What do you know about Central yeah, C? Yeah, yes. <laughs> that would be incredible if you walk out with Central C. You think you can make that nah, happen? Man, forget all that stuff right okay, now. Okay, we don't need that. We don't need that. Forget it. Forget yeah, it. Forget it. We're focused. focused. Okay. Because I'm right. telling you, you're taking my mind. I'm sorry, like sorry, sorry, right sorry, 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 sorry. AJ, you're okay. the man. I'm so excited about this. What a man. Thank you for doing this. Much love to you and your family. Good luck. And hopefully we'll you see too. you out there in uh, Riyadh. If, if we see you out okay. there, will you give me a, a fist bump? 100%. Uh, 100 meters. <laughs> my man. SUV. SUV. That's right, AJ. My guy. Thank you so much, AJ. All the best to you. Yeah, there he is. Care, SOS. Somebody rescue me. Got too many, got too many, got too many. Oh, that was that was crazy, guys. That was that was like a shot of adrenaline. Uh, you know yourself, AJ, on the program. What do you think about that in your crick? That was nuts. I was already at like a 15 about this fight now you know now i'm at a 20 have we I, have we ever vibed with a first time get, i'm sweating over here oh my yeah. gosh as we said i think you and i both kind of had the same sentiment um said in in recent weeks like this version of aj is much more interesting than i think the kind of like very manicured prepackaged version we had in the early era and i'm here for it like i'm just so excited about every time he fights and uh this nganu fight i think is the perfect foil for him so um my excitement continues to rise for this for this matchup i was talking to some people earlier and they're i was like what's aj you know because sometimes you hear uh they're like uh you know he's not very talkative i was like all right all right we're gonna have to and he came on there he was like the happy i was blown guy. away <laughs> I mean, that I, smile with the uh, light and everything. Oh, my God. That First of all, incredible. shout out to the jersey. Look at you, Bills Mafia. Shout oh, out, shout, shout out. Shout out to the Bills. Oh, my God. I, I feel like I could go home. I feel like we're yeah, good. All right. Let's all right. Well, I mean, that was amazing. Golly. AJ was in fine form there. and he yeah, was, that's a good way to put it. He was uh, he was picking up all my uh, my references. My I was going to say, he's, I mean, he's finishing <laughs> off your rap lyrics for Central C right there. That's incredible stuff. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I also, called, you on, called you on some stuff. Called too. me, I love yeah, that. Yeah. But he was going to let it ride, too. He wasn't going to bring it up. He waited for you to kind of... Yeah. Fuck, I was hoping he didn't see I loved the I loved the... Uh, <laughs> We have beef until proven otherwise. Yes. Yeah, but you know what the thing is? Near the end, he says Francis Ngannou is an easy work. No, a hard. He's a hard. He's a hard out, and so am I. He's so focused. ultimately, I feel like he's kind of in your camp of uh, of understanding that you know it's not going to be easy work. It's, this is what a huge easy. mistake if he. I mean, all he has to do to get a shot at the undisputed title now is beat Francis Ngannou, the zero and one. You know what I mean? It's right there for him. This is all he's ever this wanted. This is the best position. Well, I mean, the man was the champ. He this, but this undisputed. is undisputed, undisputed is against closest, Tyson he's or been, Usyk. Yeah, this, this, and also, God, yeah, if he could redeem himself against Usyk, the magnitude awesome. of that fight now is bigger than anything he's been in before. Even though there has been levels of greatness we've seen from him, this would be the the pinnacle of his career. So, it's there. It is right there just, for him. Just amazing too that we're getting Usyk Fury three weeks prior. That's perfect. It's amazing. It's amazing. The timing works out great. I mean, they're talking now about Bivol Betterbiev and this UFC card. I always was under the impression, I, I'm not an expert when it comes to this uh, this stuff, but that it was going to be like during this Riyadh season, which was October to March. But now they're talking about June. Is it possible three months later that we get the winner, Francis? And, and by the way, can we just also talk about the fact that is Francis a guy who won win away from fighting for the undisputed title? <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I why not? I don't know if the same rules apply for Francis as uh, AJ. We'll see. You don't think? If Fury and Ngannou both win, they're not they're not doing a rematch for Undisputed? Uh, I, 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 I can't see why they wouldn't. I think they could. I just, I think AJ is the one who it's more assured for. But yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt it. And also, as, as Francis himself has pointed out, there is a rematch. Uh, clause in Fury and Usyk, so the the timeline becomes. Yeah, but guess you know, what? Guess who put that rematch clause in? The same guys who announced today that they're fighting for the undisputed title. So I don't know. They 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 announced it. Uh, Turkey himself announced that they're fighting for this belt. Even showed a belt. It's like they're creating their own promotion here. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's a wild wild time in the world of combat sports. Um, later on in the show, like I said. We're going to be joined by Yuri Prochaska, Drikas Duplessis, and Brandon Moreno. Fantastic foursome 
of guests four pack, if you will. And I've got I've got like tingly feelings in my in my arms because uh, Bill's playing at four thirty. So this is a nice distraction, and what a way to start the day with uh, with Anthony Joshua, aka my guy Femi. You know what I'm talking about? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, let us talk about this past weekend for now. Uh, Magomed Ankalaev beats Johnny Walker. Tremendous finish. Will Magomed Ankalaev's next fight be for the light heavyweight title, Rick? I don't know enough about the timeline for Jamal Hill's return. If it is extended, then yes. Mm. Do you think... Okay. Okay, so... I don't think he's a preferable option to Jamal Hill. I think if Alex Pereira is given the opportunity to fight one or the other, he will choose Jamal Hill every time. And so it depends on when Alex is coming back and when Jamal is healthy. Is there anyone else that has a uh, nope. a claim? No. Well... Yes, Israel Adesanya, but that's only that's on Israel. If he chooses and wants to, that would be he would skip the line. I think there's bigger. As we discussed last week, Izzy versus DDP, Izzy versus Strickland. These these are all as big, if not bigger, at this point. You don't think? I do, but you're asking me if there's anybody else yeah. in the light heavyweight title contention. Uh, I'm not answering whether I think that is a bigger fight than any of those two. I would probably say. It is because it's for another title for Izzy um, and the rivalry between Alex and, and Izzy continues to provide. So probably, but I'm only answering that there is somebody who could skip Magomed in line other than Jamal Hill. I just don't Izzy want, said I want it. Yeah, done. I just I just I just feel like we saw him at 205 and I know it's a completely different opponent. Jan and yeah, I uh, mean, Pereira are just, a little bit different because he's fought this guy. No, a lot different. Yeah, same a, guy. I just I just want to see him. I like the story of him recapturing that belt as opposed to the story of him going after Pereira because they have that history. Do you know what I mean? I'm with that, but he's already done that story. He already did the recapture the belt story. No, he did it once already. This is a different one. This feels different. <laughs> Not to me. <laughs> that one felt more significant. The Alex one felt way more significant. Uh, I, I, I think, look. If you're Israel Adesanya, you've got no bad options. These are all great for you. If they're you, if you're the UFC planning Israel Adesanya's next fight, these are no bad options. I I just think Alex is in a spot where he's got some choices to make, right? Like what what is going to be his next fight? And I don't think there's a no brainer amongst them, um, other than if Jamal Hill says I can go ASAP, and uh, Alex says yeah. I wonder, Achilles is a real, I mean, I know yep. uh, Mr. Aaron Rodgers was trying to come back <laughs> yes. two months later, but that's usually a year. It's usually a, a, a long-term injury. And even when you come back after the year, it's not an immediate return to a, to full form. So, yeah. Can, can, I, can I offer this uh, scenario? Can we sure. get Roundtree, Pereira, Magomed, Hill, number one contender fight? Why is Roundtree hopping Magomed? Because he's just on fire and he's a good dude. Yeah, and yeah, why is, why is Roundtree <laughs> jumping what? a hill too? Uh, I just I just want to see Roundtree fight for the belt, basically. Uh, look, I, the, I'm also not I think it, the, I but... think the most fun matchup for Pereira is Roundtree versus Pereira. I yeah. agree. Just, I agree. just stylistically, I'm talking here. I mean, I could see a world because I don't think Hill and uh, Pereira to me feels like a potential pay per view headliner. Pereira and Magomed feels more co-main eventy to me, honestly. Like you're not getting a lot of promotion out of Magomed. Obviously, Alex has some juice, but like you're not getting a lot of trash talk, English speaking. There's going to be some some real hurdles in the promotion of that fight. So why not? I feel like Khalil could hop in there now. I don't. I don't think it's likely um, I don't because of how Magomed's performance went, but. I don't hate it either because if it's going to be a co-main, why not? Like, that's okay. That's a suitable co-main in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. there's. It, it just does feel like, though, we are, we are all kind of looking for reasons for it not to be Magomed because he's he's not – he's he doesn't have something. There's, oh, there's I'm not looking. I, 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 I am. Okay. <laughs> no, I think – I mean, Uncle I of Pereira, tough fight for Pereira. Yeah. Super tough fight. Agreed. There's there is some star there is a there is a star power vacuum uh with Magomed. He he doesn't have that yet. Now, I've kind of talked about it this week leading into the into the main event. I think there's 
a, a pathway. You learn a little bit of English. You do a little bit of a Habib and Islam impression. You talk just enough and do just enough. And you start stringing together wins and it will come. But right now, he doesn't have that. He's, he's not there yet. If Hill comes back, you do Pereira versus Hill. If he's not ready to come back yet, you do Pereira versus Ankalaev. Uh, and if Hill does come back, you do Ankalaev versus Khalil Roundtree. Ooh. There you go. Just solve the light heavyweight division. Can I tell you on this? Uh, when is Alex fighting? This is the important. It thing. seems like he's ready to go. He keeps yeah. teasing news and Glover's and tweeting. It's probably going to be Magomed. I feel like it's going we'll like like to be Magomed. I like Glover talking shit on his behalf. Um, yeah. I still I, this whole what was he? What do you do? Like three plus a hundred times three. Yeah, we're not we're not trying to uh, dissect that. I crazy think it was exactly. I think it was thirty plus three hundred equals three. Yeah, something like that. Um, what about this scenario? This June, this supposed June show in Saudi Arabia, Islam versus Gaethje. Yep. Pereira versus Ankalaev. Sure. Makes sense. Hamzat versus the winner of Strickland DDP. Oh uh, wow! Title fight. So this, so so we went June from a fight night. Yeah. Right, that right. card and Conor McGregor in it. Also, oh my I, god, yeah. I just have to say, okay. here, there'll be no. no champions left by July. <laughs> I was just about to say, all right. So we got we got McGregor going at the end of June. Yeah. Now you've just laid out a triple. I, I, this is, by the way, I'm not. I'm just. I know, I know, I know. We're just yeah, theorizing yeah. here. Uh, so that would be 302, 303 McGregor. Oh uh, 300 is also going to be pretty stacked up. 299 is obviously stacked to the gills. What does? Uh, 301. 301 become. I mean, is 301 just that like T-Mobile? There's no champs on it. They put the BNF no. belt on the line for some random. Division. I think UFC is canceling vacations. UFC uh, MMA fans are going to have to cancel summer plans because they've bought every single pay per view in the lead up to the summer. It's just that's it. We're done after June. I just We're, want to know what happens left. at 301. No, because nothing. okay, so no. I I feel like there's a scenario where they keep Grasso for Noche UFC because yeah. yeah. they're banged up. Her versus Shevchenko. Uh, we found out last week Zhang Wei Li is fighting Yan Chaonan. That was after our show, I believe. It was Wednesday night, if memory serves me correct, right? Or was that before the show? I don't remember. No, it was, it was no, after no, the show. No, it was after the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, stayed up really late. Yes, for that. Right, yeah. And everyone got upset. Um, yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll find someone, to your point, they could just do a BMF title for, you know, the women's featherweight division or something like that. Everyone be like, oh my God, this sick. is incredible. <laughs> I mean, put Silver on the line, I'm there. <laughs> what about the reaction? Wait, is it Silver interim? Or no, now no, no, we're that's what it, it should be. Silver okay. is BMF right Got it, got it, got it. You what about the reaction to this 300 news? The, the Zhang fight? Yes. So it's a great fight. He could have just announced it when he was making the announcement about having to make an announcement, though. Is it possible the fight... <laughs> yes, 100%. Is it possible the fight wasn't done when he made the announcement for the announcement because they didn't even have a poster ready for it? They just did no, the old Marcel yeah. That Dork. was actually crazy. That was actually crazy because they just have the Photoshop template. Yes. All they had to do was plug in the two fighters and change the names. Yes. They didn't even have that ready. Uh, so they just yeah. did the two pictures side by side. Yeah, there's a there's a case to be made that yeah they weren't ready for it. By the way, two separate done. photo files too, not even the same yeah. file, not even mashed up together. UFC. You don't even see. It. I mean, they have the 300 template too. They've used it for every one of the other one of the fights that have been announced. Uh, I guess the only good thing that came out of it was the you know they got hashtag oil them up trending. <laughs> I think Dana Post now is just like we're gonna oil you up. Is there is there a case to be made? I don't even know. Like, cause cause again. Everyone's going all crazy. Then they come back with Cody versus Figueredo on Friday, great which is a, a great fight that everyone wanted. I just don't know how they try to avoid. People were saying that I was talking down to the fans when I said, like, you need to just curb your expectations here. And all I was trying to say was, you know, what was the, the most amazing thing about it. I put out two tweets on, on Thursday. One of them was 300 isn't all that bad. You guys just have to recognize that you're getting a great pay-per-view every single yes. month. And so this idea of like some Super Bowl to end all Super Bowl of UFC just doesn't really exist because you have to fulfill those masters in January and February and March, et cetera. And so people are like, it's because Dana White himself said, said so. He promised us the greatest fight of all time. And so then now I was being called like a Dana White sympathizer and I was being called the day. It was cra It was wild. And uh, what I what I wanted to say, if I was in the mood to engage in all the comments was, that's the job of a promoter. 
A promoter is supposed to tell you on Saturday it's going to be the greatest card in Toronto history and next month's featherweight title fight is going to be the greatest ever. That's the job of the promoter. The job of the media and the fans is to say, all right, I'm into this, I'm not into this. Like, that's what he does. That's quite literally his job is to promote and to let you know that everything is going to be the biggest and best. That's what promoters do. The next tweet that I had was saying, hey, it's just not 2016, which was when 200 happened. And 2016 had Connor and it had Nate and it had Ronda and it had John Jones and it had Daniel Cormier and Bisping and Cruz and Faber and all this stuff. And Stipe wins the belt. It's just not the same. There just isn't as many superstars. And then I got, look at Ariel, trying to hate, always hating on the UFC. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to get you guys to a point to where you appreciate this card because it's going to be a great card. If Bo Nickel is, in fact, the, the first fight of the night, the curtain jerker, that is a great card. That is an amazing card. And there's yet to be one dud on this. There's what yet to be yeah. one fight on this card that you're like, this fight sucks. They're all great. They're just not matching the expectations that everyone has set Dana White's fault or not for this card because I don't know like I saw some people putting up mock cards and it's like these things can't even happen they're not even realistic these people aren't ready they're not fighting they're not on the roster whatever it is I'm just trying to get people to understand that it's not that I'm trying to sympathize it's not that I'm trying to hate you just have to understand that it's a different time than 2016. They don't have this plethora. I also saw people saying that's revisionist history. Bisping and Rockhold and Faber and Cruz weren't as big today as they were back then. I would argue they were bigger than than they were today. In the prime yes. of their careers, what are you talking about? Like we were all there living this. DC don't, was bigger then than he is today. So anyway, just don't apologize for using the minimum amount of brain power <laughs> required to figure this out. Like don't don't apologize for that. Like that's on them. That's on whoever has created these artificial expectations and extrapolated from what Dana White said to all of a sudden Habib and GSP are fighting. Like, that's not your fault. That's nobody's fault other than themselves. Well, maybe it's Chael's fault, but other okay, than that. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what? You're right. The expectations Correct. are pretty they're, – they're getting out of hand. I mean, also they did like a they did like a promo for it on the uh, on the Apex card on Saturday, and like the the read for it was like the greatest card in UFC history. Like, yeah, they were hyping it up, crazy. But were the they... first six fights are amazing, like that have been announced so far. The first six fights, all six of them are amazing. I still feel like there's a, a well, there's at least one rabbit. Um, yeah, it's... I mean, I would say I'd be pretty disappointed if the main and co-main were Edwards Bilal and and Zhang Yang. Like if that's main and co-main, and that, yeah. that just does not feel like UFC 300 main and co-main. No, I get it. I get that. It's just another number at the end of the day. And, of course uh, it is, yes. And, and, so, and sometimes the, the stars align to where the MSG card back in the day, they couldn't find a main event. And they had to beg DC to fight Derek Lewis on three weeks' notice. And then sometimes they've got the main event set for seven months and they're ready to go. True or false? Yeah. The UFC cares more about the quality of the card that will be in Saudi Arabia or, or over UFC 300. Mm. I don't think so. They're, they're giving this the special treatment. Like, it's got the, the graffiti logo and all that, and everything's gold, and they're, they're already hyping it up on all of these Apex cards, so I think it means a lot to them. Plus, I, the first six fights are great. First six, six fights are really good. It's a great card. It's hard for me well, to answer that question because I don't know about the, the, the moving of the card and, and is this new card going to be a pay-per-view or not? Sure, if it's a fight night, then obviously wouldn't be fair to compare, but... I know where I would focus my attention. Because, again, they I think they truly believe that 300 sells itself. Just that number alone. But, again, but also, I, they've done enough investment in this card. It's a great card. Mm -hmm. To the point that you've already made. Like, what more? I don't, Fury, I don't understand what is happening right now where we've looked at the card. We looked at the available fighters that could possibly fight on this card. Where are these other options coming from? Where is this thing that is going to wow people? It does not exist. So what what are we thinking about? What are we, like how have we not moved past this at this point? UFC 300 is what UFC 300 is going to be. I think it's going to be great. I think it's, it's going to be, be fine. Awesome. It's it's a great card, especially once they add Aspinall and uh, Waldo Cortez Acosta. Uh yes, there it is. Um, yeah, we might even get in July Manchester. And they, I don't know if that's going to be a fight night or a pay-per-view. Who knows? All I know is, stop being so negative, everyone, all right? There's a lot to be excited about. There's a lot. I mean, it's it's like banger after banger. We're getting 297 this weekend, and then we're getting, uh, I can't even, I don't even know. 298, Volk, Taporia, which is... Or are you trying to go... Like, I'm trying to go who's on the 27th. No, 
Is there there's no, no card? There's no card on that. <laughs> Wait, so then who's on the... Uh, and Delice. then the other one is Imovov. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Delice Imovov. The co-main for that one is better than the main. What's yes. The uh, I remember remarking and thinking that myself. I forgot who it is, but yes, that I, I did think that. I know what it is. I'm just waiting for you guys to... Yeah, I'm I don't know it off the top. You see Fight Night? Yeah. And, and Moicano drew that's right. That's the one. Yes. Yeah. That's why I remember yeah. seeing that be like, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm yeah, surprised yeah. Moicano. So, I mean, big, big month for Georgia. I had the same reaction. Elite, right? Marab, Taporia. Big month for Georgia. Oh, Georgia. Yeah. Uh, Georgia, the. Uh, I thought you were going to throw in a state of Georgia in there as well. <laughs> no. 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 Nah, nah. Uh, maybe um, one championship coming this fall, though, you know? That is true. That is true. Also announced uh, since we last spoke, Sean Brady uh, to the event you guys are going to against Sir. Vicente Luque, March yeah, 30th. You got jersey ties, Sean Brady just across the border in, in Pennsylvania. Yeah, Philly. Great. AC is close to Philly. Aaron, Aaron Blanchfield on the card as well already. Yes. If you're Vicente Luque, are you annoyed that you're not getting Ian Gary and you're getting Sean Brady instead? Because you can make a case that Brady's a tougher matchup just given the skill set, right? I do think it gives him a little more oomph, or a little more pr- propulsion toward a title shot, though. I think a win over Brady really matters in that division. Brady 7. Gary. Bilal Muhammad's still waiting for his title shot after the win over Brady. Well, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. He actually had to, he had everybody's to fight. made the case for Bilal Muhammad at this well, point. Well, he had to actually had to fight Benil to get that title shot, yeah. supposed title shot. But I get what you're saying. I'm just saying Ian Gary just so high profile at this point. Sure. I don't think Luke cares about that part, if I'm being honest. I think I think a win over Brady does more rankings wise. And that's what he needs. Yeah. You guys happy with that as the uh, the main event for the card you're Wait, going to? Cool is it? I love that there's like actual ties to Jersey on, great, on the main and co main. Fight. It's the way it should be. It's it's awesome. AC, gonna take it over. Shut it down. Um, man, there's just so much. There's just so much going on. Did you guys watch the Better Biev uh, fight on Saturday? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Better Biev is... What about that Christian and Billy? You see that in the co-main? That man was throwing hammers, dude. When he knocked the mouthpiece out of the <laughs> entire ring and they said uh, it landed on, like, a top rank exec's lap and he had to, like, hand it back into the ring. Yes. That was crazy, man. I, I had it on, like, on the side. I was kind of... I was on the UFC Vegas 84 post show and I had it on on the side. The, the the mouthpiece flying out got me to like legit crank my neck and and turn to see it because that was some wild stuff. Uh, He's calling for Canelo, huh? Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. It just doesn't have the know. name, but yeah. uh, very exciting. Represents France, but also trains out of Montreal now and represents Montreal. That was a great crowd, too, in the midst of a snowstorm. They didn't cancel that. Like those soft Buffalo fans. <laughs> <laughs> the hype uh, for Better Biev was sick. Oh, it was great. Like they, they, really, they really own him there. Better be have uh, hit Smith with a uppercut to the neck. Did you see that? Yes. Golly, this guy. He's terrifying. Terrifying. But then he's, not... so, he's so nice and soft-spoken in the post. Yeah. He's like, merci, Quebec. And he's just like so... There's no like, I'm going to kill... I'm going to smash right, you right, from right. him. You know what I mean? Uh, does not look 38. No. Does not fight like he's 38. Turning 39 like, like two weeks, too. Crazy. Loved the, uh, like the like pinstripe gloves. The black with the white stripes on it. Thought those looked great. By the way, was that a... Uh, a shot at the uh, atypical findings in his pre-fight test. The fact they're saying he doesn't look like he's 38. Was that a subtle shot? No, I was just commenting on <laughs> appearance. <laughs> they said he had elevated levels of HGH, and uh, there was a whole thing with Vada and... Uh, he's a growing young man. Victor Conti and uh, Eddie Hearn and Bob Arum. So much drama I missed there. all of this. Oh, you missed all of it? it? Yeah, oh, no, I'm just enjoying the fight. How about Eddie Hearn? I mean, you know, just in business casual, just just looking like a normal guy in the ring on Saturday night. He was just there to back his guy. It's a, it's an away game. I love it. Uh, speaking of away game, our Nottingham Forest uh, embroiled in their own scandal. They're uh, they're being we penalized. Lose relegated. It's still up in the air. We don't know if we're going to lose points yet. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, I just I feel like my head is spinning. There's just so much going on. Bills game, Forest, Francis and AJ, AJ and I, newfound. Best friends. Amazing. Uh, uh, going to Puerto new, Rico we on Wednesday. Boxing belt. Oh, we got a new boxing belt. That's right. He just created a belt. Turkey yeah, just I mean, created we, a we belt. Got a picture of it. Like it looks like uh, it looks like the last time the UFC uh, like updated their belt. Like they got all the reasonings behind it. Oh really? Premium leather, main plate, incorporates gold and silver. Yeah, like they they have the whole breakdown. 
Now they have all the the commission logo. Yeah. Like are they in on sanctioning this? Sanctioning bodies. Yeah, the sanctioning bodies. They're they're all in on. Uh, that? I would I would think so. But you know, one of the, one of the fun things about being an undisputed champion of boxing is that like you get to stand there with the four belts. Yeah, you know? it's kind of cool when you do the whole draping thing. Yeah, yeah, or that. Yeah. Now you're just gonna walk around like the WWE champ. It's gonna just be like Roman Reigns with one belt. Yeah, look WWE esque. It's cool until this champion doesn't want to fight this champion or this guy becomes the mandatory and all those things that are associated with those belts. It's the worst. And then they're going to have to cut it up. They're going to have to cut pieces of it. I, I, hate like it. I hate the multiple. I hate the multiple belts. I love this. Let's, let's streamline boxing. How about our guy Zhang? Komen. Oh yeah. Zhile Zhang against Joseph Parker. Love it. Ooh. Absolutely love it. I mean, me and Rick have, are smitten with this guy, Yule yeah, Jong. Big he's, fans. He's incredible. Trains in Jersey. We should have him stop by the studio. Please, can Same. we? I mean, can we please? I, I love a man with Jersey ties. I got two boxers, Shakur Stevenson and Jong. Oh, that's right. Jong. That's right. What is he training? I think uh, Bloomfield he trains out of. Shout out. Yeah. Um, well, we could work on that. No problem. Uh, so, yes, like we said, very exciting. Then we've got the first pay-per-view of the year. Level of excitement going into the first pay-per-view of... Uh, I'm pretty hyped. I'm pretty excited. I mean, this main this main event. Uh, I think it's going to be a great fight, and then just the bad blood behind it. I'm I'm pretty excited for it. It's great that they're going back to Canada too. Toronto as well. I was on a Toronto radio show with my guy Donovan Bennett earlier oh, today. Out. It's going to air oh, later on. Plug. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know Donovan Bennett? Uh, no, but I mean Toronto radio. Yeah, yeah. Sports. Uh, those are my guys over at Sports. Donovan Bennett. Uh, he was asking me about the state of Canadian MMA, and I, I equated it to. In everything in the fight game, there's peaks and valleys. I would say that we're in a valley right now, but I feel like if the if this was the peak and this was the valley, like we're starting to come out of the valley a little bit with the likes of Mike Malott leading the way. And so I Jasmine, feel like Jasmine there's – What's that? Jasmine Jez Jasmine, Jasmine, Jasmine. And no, as we as – Jez Divisius. That's right. We uh, noted this uh, last week. You know, up until the last three fights on the card, they're all Canada versus the world. So if you're that's a Canadian great. MMA fan – Pull um, up, have a great time, cheer on the Canadians, and then enjoy the last three fights of the night, which, you know, two titles on the line and Arnold Allen, Mosar Evelov. I also think that uh, the UFC, and, and we've experienced this with uh, the UFC going to ESPN, the UFC being back with Sportsnet is huge for them. Sportsnet really did a great job of promoting the sport in Canada. And uh, TSN, I just always kind of felt like they were kind of half in, half out. And I think now... Shout out to our uh, pal Aaron Bronstetter for getting the job as the uh, lead reporter over there. I think now they're really going to push uh, the UFC in a really big way across the region, and hopefully we can get some promotional, um, you know, regional events out there as well to start building younger talent like we had back in the day with Maximum Fighting Championship and Score Fighting Series and TKO. Uh, they really helped develop a lot of young Canadian talent. Uh, hopefully this can be the beginning of that. So more 297 talk to come later on in the program. We're going to be joined by one half of the main event, Drickus Duplessis. He'll join us in about 30 minutes time. But for now, uh, let us talk to the man who we last saw back in November and who we found out recently is going to return to action on April 13th at UFC 300 against Alexander Rakic. It's going to be Austria versus and Serbia versus the Czech Republic. It's going to be Rakic versus Prochaska, Yuri Prochaska joining us right now. There he is, our old friend Yuri. Hello, Yuri. How are you? Hey, hey Ariel. Hello, everyone. It's good Hi. to see you again, my friend. Uh, it's uh, been uh, several months since we last spoke, so I uh, hope you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, everything great. Everything great today or or the last week I told I finally started the preparation so now I'm finally healthy and uh, ready to, to start the preparation in full full power. So I'm happy for that and to be back in the business. Yeah. I love it. Um, by the way, did you just do yeah. a, a bike ride around Mallorca recently? Yeah, 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 yeah. How many miles yeah, was that? Last, or kilometers? Last, 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 last week. Last week I was, uh, uh, I was on, on my, Mallorca. In Mallorca and uh, with my friends who, who like the bicycles, these these speed bicycle training, and yeah, that's that's the because it's good good uh, good uh, training for the legs, for knees, for everything. 
and for uh, cardio, cardio training. Yeah, so once, twice a year, we we go to we go to Mallorca, Mallorca and I love do it. This training. Uh, yeah. So, so like I said, the last time we saw you was in November here in New York. Uh, when yeah. when you think about that night, when you think about Madison Square Garden, what what comes to mind? I know it was difficult for you, and it was hard to see how upset you were afterwards. But I'm just no, wondering no, the emotion. No, 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 man, nothing hard, nothing, okay. nothing bad, <laughs> because I know where exactly my mistake uh, was. Not just in a fight, but in the preparation. What I did um, like bad, and there was a small things which I didn't like keep in the preparation, and uh, that that was the details which which was the was the main thing in the, in the, in that fight, and uh, I'm very happy for that. It uh, that fight remembered me these these mistakes because more than more than everything I like to 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 making myself better in fighting in life in everything day by day so that's why I'm happy for that and uh, that's why I'm I I can say now. I will be, I really be better. And next fight, doesn't matter who's the opponent right now, I will win and I will go for the title. That's all. And uh, I'm very glad for for all these things which gave me the these, uh, this view of the positive view for for my way and that's why I'm happy. Can I ask when you say uh, you made some mistakes leading up to the fight, wh- what are you referring to? Uh, that's something what I need to keep okay. just, in, just inside and keep working on that, keep working, be quiet. Uh, and that's all. Keep working. Keep working on that. When you, when to be you... more precise, faster, and durable stronger faster and the winner in the final are yeah. the are these lessons that you learned after the fact or did you know or did you feel leading up to the fight like maybe you you weren't quite 100 percent that you you didn't do what you needed to do in the preparation yeah i knew i knew that in the, in the preparation and that's the that's the that's the i i, I never I never regret. Yeah, I never regret because what happened happened. It was the my best decision. But right now, I really knew what was the bad, what which which mistakes there was. My team knew that, and in the in the final, um, that's that's why I'm happy for that and. And uh, let's get let's let's go back to 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 the hard work, and let's take take uh, take this important fight and victory which which is before me. So let's take it. Did did he surprise you at all? Did Alex surprise you? Alex, well, no. That that's the thing. <laughs> he. He did this the same like his routine, mm. yeah. His routine. He catch me with his routine, and my last loss in two thousand, uh, like before, in two thousand fifteen, with uh, with uh, King Mo in in the rising was the similar mistake like like the la- like the last one with Alex. So uh, it gave me a big, big, big view to to my style and what I have to work on the first. As you say, it had been eight years since you last experienced the feelings that come with losing. How did you deal with that? 
in the immediate aftermath? After match, I remember that feeling and uh, <laughs> and I have to say something because to be honest, to be honest, I said to myself, man, you 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 right now you lost the fight and you are still here you are still alive you have the chance to to be better why why you not why to not use that to to be like that yeah because i'm uh listen you have to see my, myself like i'm seeing everything in a with in the, with positive uh, attitudes, yeah. So that's the, that's the thing. And after fight, especially after fight, I thought what to say to the microphone because I was totally calm and I was totally, totally, uh, uh, good with with that because i knew that that mistakes was especially that that thing which i didn't kept in the preparation and right now for me i don't want to i don't want to say that like this is my uh i don't like to do to repeat the mistakes i don't i really that that's what i hate, hate most to repeat the mistakes and uh that's what I. That's why I'm. Why I have no. No other direction than. Go through this 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 match this fight, and uh, because I don't like to fight, just like that, mm -hmm. to 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 do a bad moves, to do mistakes, to there is no time for that, like. Uh, like, I don't want to say uh, any, anybody, but but I just want to be better in every fact. Okay, that's all. That's the way of the mastery, and and that's it. In in the uh, cage afterwards, you seem to handle it very well, and uh, I was wondering how you felt about the stoppage. You said in in the moment that you were okay with it, but now, you know, a yeah, few months removed, yeah, did you feel like it was too soon? No, no, no. Uh, in a fight or after fight, there was a uh, when the referee stopped that. I knew that there was there was my like uh, uh, blind moment. Yeah, yeah. Like I blink and then I start again move move and uh, and Mark stopped that. And uh, the main thing is I didn't I didn't know how it's how how it how it was right yeah? right how it was that that situation that's why I said in the cage Margot that was right and uh, he was right because I can't in 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 uh, on the level of of the fighting like that you can't uh, you can't have like me I can't have I can't uh, to leave the the fight to be like that to to be in these situations, yeah. Where is the opponent on me, and I'm a little bit drunk, yeah. And uh, but still, Mark Goddard really, really well, no, really good. Know how I'm fighting, who I am, and. Uh, because he uh, judged my my fight with Glover, yeah, and uh, and other fights, so I think he can uh, he can let let that more, like more 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 seconds after after that stoppage. But what happened happened. I'm taking that. I'm. I don't want to speak. I will. Uh, I should. I. I should do this and this and uh. Doesn't matter. For me, I'm taking this. I'm taking. I lost. 
And right now, I will be better and I will win. That's all. Have you sat down and watched the the fight in its entirety? Have you watched the whole fight? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I I watched uh, like with Pereira. Yeah, yeah. Have you sat down and watched the whole yeah. thing? And if so, how, how do you feel when you watch it? Uh, I don't know what Alex can say, but he, that fight was in my hands till till that till that one mistake especially uh with that good stand up guy there is no no uh no place for the small small mistakes mm. because he's a good with in details and uh but till that moment that that fight was in my hand and uh, <laughs> that was that that was that thing what uh, uh, what I felt like, man, you had that guy, you had the guy like in every moment, but you did one mistake. So that's that's uh, that's something what what keeps me uh, on the w- on the way to to believe to believe that I am the I'm the champion and I will I can go for that title just be be more precise be faster be stronger be endurable be calmer and yeah that's it speaking of those things uh a lot is said about ring rust cage rust because for you it had been 16 or so months since your last fight did you feel rusty in there or was that not really a factor at all oh uh, right now uh right now no i feel i feel good after after doesn't matter how how long uh will be the break be, before the between the between the fights i'm trying to keep my my mind uh in the same in the same uh, attitude all the time, so so that's that's why I I want to feel like here we talking then in the fight. No, nothing. Uh, there's no difference. Okay. By the way, um, yeah. What was uh, fighting at MSG like for you? Remember we were talking about Madison Square Garden, this yeah. iconic venue. Yeah, great. Did you like it or was it yeah. uh, nothing special? What to say? What yeah. to say? I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. I'm going there to to fight and to win. I don't care where it is. Right. If it's Madison Square Garden, if it's the uh, on the rooftop of the, of the world or whatever, doesn't matter for me. I'm I'm going there to win, and uh, <laughs> so that's that's it. But like I said, it was for me an an honor to to fight there and to be the, in the main event. Yeah. So uh, with that in mind, does 300 mean anything to you? Like, do you feel like it's an honor to fight on 300 or do you not really care? You could fight on any card. Uh, yeah. It, that, that 300 sounds, sounds great. It will be a great card. There, I saw that there is a, there is a very great fighters next to me and that's why it's the honor for me because there is uh, another great name yeah that's uh that's a that's a big honor for me yeah H- have you been told if you're on the main card because you know there's so many big names on this card do you know where you're fighting on the card <laughs> listen for me <laughs> doesn't matter is my fight yeah e- every fight for me is the main event F- every fight for me is the title fight and that's something that's something what i what i forget to uh in a fight with uh, with pereira because there was an injury there was a preparation uh, to be uh in a fast way back a lot of things that i forget man i love the fighting i love these trainings i love the 
all these struggle around to overcome myself, to overcome all these obstacles. And uh, that's that's why I that's that's why I love it. The, you did you did just mention um, you know like coming back fast. Do you think in retrospect you came back too fast from the injury? Uh, the that shoulder, I, I like I felt that it was not in a, like full power, but there was a <laughs> there was a many fuck ups. In a, in a preparation because from the last five weeks of preparation I train just one week, yeah. So wow. So Wh- uh, why so is that? Because of your shoulder? Uh, be, no, no, no. But because the staff staff, if staff you know, infection, the staff, yeah, staff infection, yeah. Uh, well, and uh, that was the after fight. I fought. I fought with that uh, more, more than one month, oh, wow. more. So, so yeah, that was the that was that antibiotics I had before before the fight. So that was the like last five weeks before the fight was totally. Oh wow! Totally, totally. Yeah. How? How? Where was it? Huh? Where was the staph infection? Staph, uh, like uh, on my leg. And uh, then it started to then it started to to travel in my body like to oh. my ear. Oof. One 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 morning I I I, w- I woke up and my ear was like total like four times bigger. Yeah, and then another thing, then another. So there was a lot of things too. Did you consider pulling out of the fight at any point? No. What what you did what you, you mean? One more time. Did please? you consider? removing yourself from the fight at any point because of all these issues like withdrawing from the no. fight no no and when i when i saw john jones was uh, injured yeah i i a little bit thought like man uh, what to say but doesn't matter i'm a warrior and i'm going to fight and i'm going to to win every fight doesn't doesn't matter for me if it's if if I'm, because I was many times in a fight like, uh, uh, in a, with the sick to to be uh, like with sickness, with uh, many injuries, many things, and uh, I believe to I can win. And when I when you believe you can win, there is a way. The way is open. So. That's that's why I am um, I'm going to 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 every fight. So uh, your opponent in your return fight in April is Alexander Rakic. He was supposed to fight yeah. this weekend against Jan Bachovic, but Jan got injured. Uh, um, uh-huh. do, you, do you like this matchup? Were you uh, were you okay with it when it was offered to you? Uh, yes, yes, I like it. Right now, right now, I want to like I want to fight somebody who's uh, on the top five top five guys and yeah that's 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 why i don't care if it's the wreckage or uncle live or whatever whoever did you watch uncle live this weekend yeah yeah i watched that yeah what did you think of his performance against johnny walker great performance great great like good hunting good hunting level of the johnny walker who 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 was uh, like not too much, but it was dangerous in the first round, and uh, that that was that was really good work. He 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 keep he kept working, keep working, keep hunting, and uh, in the final he catch him. So he catched him. So so that's that that was great. Who, who do yeah, you th- great, very, very, very good performance. Yeah. Uh, who do you think should fight Alex next for the belt? Alex, I think uh, UFC uh, said UFC or uh, I don't know Nana White or whoever said to uh, like in my in my uh, uh, how to say. 
like it was like with me it was mm -hmm. how it was with me uh, jamal hill was the champion and he he put put out the 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 title so i think he deserved the 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 fight like logically yeah, yeah. okay uh, because magomed has been uh, trying to campaign campaign also for that and there's him and there's you and there's rakic and there's and sure 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 but uh, everybody have to have to respect some some process yeah, some process yeah yes um and you versus rakic is fun i i kind of wish that it was happening maybe in the czech republic you know like uh, austria versus that wouldn't that be fun yeah, in that, europe yeah that that's that's that that can be fun but like you said, you see 300. Yes. With a lot of good names. I'm looking forward for, for the fight. Yeah. Are you going to do anything different in this preparation? Like maybe go somewhere else or change or any changes you can tell us about? Uh, maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes is the, the best step forward to step back to your old preparation, to your old process, to the hard work, to just keep working, just believe, and just achieve, achieve the, that, that's fine. Okay. Achieve the winning. Yeah. And when you say the old process, like, do you mean before you were in the UFC? Like that long, how long ago are you yeah. going back? Yeah. Uh, just, just the hard work. That's all. Okay. Do you wish you were fighting sooner? Uh, that's in three months. That fight, or is that a good enough yeah. time for you? Right, right, right. Now it's good enough. Good uh, enough because, like, like I, like I said, I fought with uh, with that stuff. Yeah. In fact. Oh, do we lose him? We did, in fact, lose him. His uh, his quality was incredible. Maybe his phone died. Yeah, or overheated or something. We'll get him back. I doubt it overheated. Do you think it overheated in the... I don't uh, know why I said that. The gym over there. Freezing cold over there in the Czech Republic. Uh, what a guy. I love talking to Yuri because he's so thoughtful um, when he gives you answers. But uh, obviously, English isn't his first language. But you can tell he really tries and cares to express himself in the right way. So I really, really appreciate that. And that is, uh, that is a great fight for UFC 300. I am looking forward to it. And I also like that there are just certain things he's not going to answer. You know, like when I ask him about the meditation, being in the dark room and all that stuff, he just won't answer it. Just like when I asked him about the mistakes that he was referring to, although the staph infection, and please, if you're going to, I don't know, cut this up or do any sort of social thing, it's very, it's very clear, I would think, when you're watching this that I'm asking him these questions. I don't think he is offering up any sort of excuse here as one would say um i mean he mentioned the the staff thing like 20 minutes into the interview uh, but that is obviously a huge deal last five weeks antibiotics behind the knee all the way up to the ear oh sounds miserable horrible i don't know how you beat that miserable um so hopefully we're able to connect or reconnect with him before we get to our next guest. Uh, right now, as things currently stand, UFC 300 looks like this. Davison Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling in Sterling's 145-pound debut. Charles Oliveira against Armin Tarukian. Yuri Prochaska against Alexander Rakic. And Zhang Weili against Yan Chaonan. Historic fight, first time two Chinese-born fighters fight for a UFC title. Of course, that would have been a great one in China as well. Uh, they were supposed to go to China in December, but, uh, you know, need title fights, and there's a historic element, you know, really exemplifying the evolution and how far the sport has come and the organization has come and women's MMA has come. Um, so you have to appreciate that. And to me, Zhang Weili is box office. I love watching her fight. So it's all good here. No belly aching here. No complaining here. Oh, he's back. I, I did a bit of belly ache. <laughs> hey, Yuri. Fuck, man. Hey. Uh, hey. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry for that. I was a long time in here in uh, 
in the in the gym. So right now is around nine. Yes. And uh, I totally uh, uh, died. My my battery died. Oh, so, that's what I thought. So that's sorry. what I thought. I'm only gonna keep you for like one more minute, and then we'll say goodbye. So thank sure. you. Oh, uh, by the way, is this your gym? This is a beautiful gym. Yeah, it's a beautiful gym. It's not my gym, my friend's gym, and uh, that's why I'm co going here to be alone and just we'll keep working. Okay. So it, it, yeah. a final question for you, Yuri, uh, for the fans of yours, if they're wondering, okay, you know, you always wonder how someone handles a big loss or a title loss, first loss in many, many years for you. How would you describe how you're feeling mentally as you embark on this uh, training camp? For your fans, how, how are you doing? To, to everyone, uh, I have to say that... Maybe I'm a little bit happy that I remembered the, all these feelings, which I don't want to feel again. And uh, I just want to be better, be better, be better, faster, stronger, more precise, calmer, brighter, and uh, do the best performance what I can. And now I had the chance to keep working, to start really hard work in my preparation. And that's that's why I'm happy. And I will go for that, for this win, for the next win, for the title, doesn't matter. For me, it's a, it's a way for the mastery. That's all. Thank you for, thank you for this interview. I love it. Much respect to you, my friend. Always a pleasure and an honor. Thank you. Great to hear you're in a good place and thank good you. luck in training. And uh, we'll hopefully see you and talk to you in uh, in April before the big fight. Thank you. Let's go for that. Yes, let's do it, Yuri. Thank You're the you. man. There he Thank is, you. Yuri Prochaska. What a guy. I mean, how do you not love Yuri Prochaska? Uh, both those guys, very likable, very fun to root for, Yuri Prochaska and Alexander Rakic, who, of course, we spoke to uh, just uh, last week. Was it last week? Yes, I think it was last week on the program. Coming up, Drickus Duplessis and Brandon Moreno, I am looking forward to both of those chats. But first, a quick word from our good friends over at BetterHelp. Uh, support for the MMA Hour comes from BetterHelp Online Therapy. Every new year, a lot of us get obsessed with what we'd like to change about ourselves. Maybe you want to hit the gym an extra two times each week or limit yourself to one scoop of ice cream most nights. Or maybe you just want to read a single book. Whatever it is, your resolutions are probably trying to quote-unquote fix some kind of perceived flaw. This year, therapy can help you to focus on expanding those things that you're already doing right. And obviously, we may feel like we're perfect, but we can all work on something. We can all uh, benefit from therapy, from talking to someone, from getting out there and trying to better ourselves. Well, BetterHelp offers affordable online therapy that is convenient and designed to fit into your busy schedule. If you're beginning the new year with an eye on self-improvement, therapy may offer lasting benefits than that daunting checklist of resolutions. Therapy can help you identify and solidify your strengths, helping to improve your resiliency, your mood, and relationships. Just fill out BetterHelp's painless questionnaire online, and they'll pair you with a licensed therapist ready to help you start the new year on the right foot. Celebrate the progress you've already made. You can visit betterhelp.com slash MMA hour today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MMA hour, one of our favorites. Appreciate them, support them because they support us and most importantly, support yourself. I uh, just got a text here. Hope he doesn't mind me sharing from Tim Simpson, who is uh, Yuri Prochaska's manager. And he, he texted, I feel like I could run through a wall right now um, after listening to Yuri. And uh, I understand where he's coming from. Uh, he is a very easy guy to root for because he brings such authenticity and such intensity to his chats and to his uh, fights. It's a lot of fun to back him. Um, UFC 297 coming up this weekend in Toronto, back in the six in the T dot in the great white North. And obviously Drick is two plus C versus Sean Strickland is the main event, but it's a nice little car. We've got some, Solid names on the card, and the place to be for all the action is, of course, DraftKings 
Sportsbook. They are the official sports betting partner of the UFC, and they will take your excitement level north of the border this weekend. New customers can bet five bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. I was trying to pull up the card while I was reading that. I did a horrible job of doing so. Uh, let me try to get the UFC 297 card. Of course, we have the return of Mike Malott on the program, or on the card, I should say. You've got uh, Neil Magny going up against them. Always a tough test. Always a nice litmus test, if you will. Vacant women's bantamweight title fight, Myra Buena Silva against Raquel Pennington. Can Raquel finally get it done? Or will Silva continue her winning ways? Chris Curtis going up against Marc-André Barrio. And what about the pride of Ipswich Town himself? Arnold Almighty Allen, AAA, or maybe it's Almighty Arnold Allen, going up against Movsar Evloev, Brad Katona, Charles Jordan, Jillian Robertson, and our very own Jasmine. Jazz Davizius. Also on the card, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with the code DMA. Our new customers bet just five bucks on UFC 297 and get 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code DMAR. The crown is yours. Gambling problem called 100 Gambler. Or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369. Please play responsibly. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuing. See dkng.com slash MMA for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Fighting in the main event. One half of the main event. Looking to become UFC champion. For the first time in his career is the pride of South Africa, the one and only DDP Drickus Duplessis, and he's kind enough to join us live from Toronto right now. There he is. Drickus, how are you? Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me, man. Always good. Um, well, uh, you are in. I see you a bit bundled up over there in Canada. I've seen the weather. How are you, uh, how are you dealing with this weather? How is it uh, feeling? No, I'm absolutely loving it. I mean, coming from South Africa, we don't know this kind of weather. Yesterday, I uh, went into the Toria Lake. We did some uh, no way. A cold plunge there. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then uh, it was minus 10, minus 11 on the on the beach, on the, well, on the, uh, yeah, the beach area. The sand was literally flo- frozen. As I got out of the water, my hair immediately froze solid. It was, it was crazy. It was a lot worse than I thought. But, I mean, you're only here once. Well, I mean... For the first time, and I'm I'm really liking Canada a lot. I know you said you moved to the states, but this place is amazing. It is amazing. So this is your first time in Canada in general. You've never been to any part of Canada. Yeah, yeah, it's my first time. I'm I'm definitely staying extra after the fight to really enjoy it. I mean, the food looks amazing. The the people are awesome. I'm really enjoying it. Nice. I uh, love to hear that. Uh, Toronto is a fantastic uh, city. And uh, by the way, yesterday, your birthday, happy birthday, happy belated birthday. So was that Thank how you, you uh, celebrated by jumping in the lake? Did you do anything of note? Anything special? No. I mean, uh, that's the one thing with uh, like while I'm sitting here bundled up inside. I mean, it's warmed up inside, but, you know, uh, water loading taking all this water just cools your body down so much. It's, it's, it's pretty cold. Uh, but yeah, didn't do anything of note yesterday. Luckily it was a Sunday, so I don't train on Sundays. It's my Sabbath. So, um, we could just, uh, have fun. And that was, that was our activity for the day, getting to, to, to get into the cold. Uh, I've talked to some fighters. I remember Daniel Cormier telling me, uh, when he, when he fought in Buffalo, that he had a really hard time cutting weight. He fought in April because it was so cold and he just felt like his body was having a hard time heating up. Does that concern you at all as we approach, you know, the real weight cut later on this week? No, I can't. That that doesn't. No, not at all. The thing is, the things with our bodies. You now, the cold actually helps you when you're cutting weight. I mean, when you're actually cutting the weight, you want heat. But remember, our bodies are a lot smarter. We adapt to any situation. So, if your body is, if you are, people like to, you know, put on warm clothes before the week of the weight cut, but. Your body's going to, if you are warm, your body's going to want water to cool it down. If it's cold, your body lets go of water. Mm. So that's the thing. If you're water loading and it's cold, your body's going to let go of water easily. So uh, that's the thing. You don't want to be warm the whole time. You want to be, the co- the cooler, the better for, for your body to get rid of, uh, as you start flushing water through your system and we start cutting the water, 
if you're warm, your body's going to hold on to that water to cool your body down. But if you if you if you're cold, your body's going to let go of it. Okay. Um, well, I think that's uh, I've heard that before, and I really hope I'm right. Otherwise, right. I'm looking like an idiot right now. Um, well, we'll find out later in the week. Um, obviously, like the 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 real yeah. fight week fun is about to start um, in the coming days. Does this feel different at all? Like you do you feel a little bit more? I don't know, anxious, tense. You're the main event. You're on the poster. Title fight. Uh, you've you've just fought a big fight against Robert Whitaker on a really big card, so it's not like you're new to any of this. But this one is obviously a little bit different. Does it feel any different internally for you? Yeah, it feels absolutely amazing. I'm on the poster. That's that's where I wanted to be, and here we are. I'm um, I'm loving every moment of it, and then it's not different in in a sense of of how I feel about it. For me, my debut as a professional, not even in the UFC, felt exactly the same as this fight feels. And my UFC debut, I'm always feeling like this because every fight to me is a world title fight. Every fight I fight is the last fight I will ever fight. I'm there to win or to die trying. Whether it's my debut, whether it's for the title, I'm there to win. Because without a win, I wouldn't be here. And uh, that's that's how I feel. That's how I feel every fight. Obviously, uh, more eyes on this fight. There's a lot of things happening and you know, more pressure uh, in terms of if you look at it from how South Africa, my my home country, how the people are excited for this making history, that pressure is good. That's 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 how it always feels. I mean, fighting Robert Whitaker, that was the exact same situation where this is the biggest thing to happen for us, and uh, I have this opportunity to um, represent my country in the biggest way, and uh, I absolutely love that responsibility. You know, um, you you thought probably like we all did that you were going to get the title shot right after uh, beating Robert Whitaker, and we saw you and Izzy in the ring and all that. And so much has changed since then. After you didn't get the title shot, and they went to Strickland, and who knows what happens afterwards? And there was this talk: Is it going to be Hamza? Is it going to go back? Was there any part of you that worried or was nervous about the fact, like, hey, is 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 this ship going to sail by? Am I going to? not get the opportunity that it just passed me by? Like, were you worried at all that this, what you're about to experience, wasn't going to happen as soon as it did? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, for me, in the beginning, um, when this all happened, and I realized maybe the UFC is a little pissed off at me, I didn't understand why at all. But, I mean, they rectified. They said, listen, we're not pissed off. There was a situation where, like, the show needs to go on. And that, that I understand. They not said... He doesn't like when fighter turns down fights, but obviously that's situational. It's not an ideal situation. So, yeah, maybe emotions are high or whatever. But I didn't look into that. I said, well, obviously, as a business, that is what made sense. The me and easy fight then, there with that hype, that was for business good. So I understood the point of view of we want that fight now while the iron's hot. But, I mean, for me, it wasn't possible. So, I mean, it wasn't my fault. It's nobody's fault. It was situation that we were in but not for one moment that i go and say oh maybe i've missed my opportunity when they gave strictly in the shot i said well great now if easy beats him i'll fight him after if he doesn't uh, i'll fight Strickland. it doesn't matter to me but then like you said what if they go and say no you're not getting it out of shot because you missed your opportunity and so what i'll fight the next guy in line they can't keep me away from it forever and i was you know the my argument is I want to be champion of the world. I want to be better than every single person in that division. Whether I fight a number three or four ranked guy or number two ranked guy, whatever, before I win the belt or after, makes no difference to me. So that was where my mind was at. It's 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 a matter of time. It's not um, if I get a title shot, it's when. And that was that was my mindset. You know, obviously I wanted that title shot, but if it if I didn't have the title shot, I would have had the fight. I had to fight and beat somebody else, and that would have been fine. What was your reaction when you found out that you versus Strickland, a South African versus an American, a very proud American, would be fighting in Canada? Uh, my, I originally had heard that they were looking to do Islam on the card, and then he got bang, banged up, and then and then you guys were put in the main event slot, which I don't think Strickland knew about and or was happy about, unless he was joking when he said that. What was your reaction when you found out that you'd be kicking off the year as far as pay-per-views are concerned? Yeah, I mean, a big difference for for uh, no. I don't think there's a lot of fighters who want that 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 uh, first card of the year slot. To be honest, uh, you know, that's training camp over uh, the family holidays. That's training camp over Christmas. That's family camp. Uh, that's that's camp over 
um, New Year's. That uh, all that. No, and that's that's how I live my life. I I, try, I work my ass off every single day, and it's family time come um, December. And you know, from the second week of December, I'm on holiday for two weeks. I'll be training, but I'm not. I'm not in the gym. I'm I'm with my family because all the sacrifice and you know, almost not being able to spend the time with family and friends and the people closest to me because of what I do and how um, committed I am to my to my to my career. That is the time I spend with them and Christmas is family time and all of that. But everybody was on board with the with the bigger picture for this fight. And uh, when we got that fight, yeah, nobody wants that the first quarter of the year, but. We embraced it, the whole team. It was it was incredible because everybody had holiday plans and just the whole team, coaches, my coaching team, my um my my sparring partners, everybody just immediately said, No problem, cancelled plans. Family went on holiday without them. I mean, that is that is that is special. And that's that is the team. That's what you call a team. And uh, my team at CIT, I'm extremely proud and and uh, grateful for them because without them. I'm going to have a camp, and we had an exceptional camp, feeling great. And yeah, like I said, interesting that they did this in Canada, since they built me up for Vegas, and then him being native to Vegas, um, that that that's interesting. But I mean, for me, it's it was enemy territory in Vegas always, and I was completely cool with that. I, it doesn't bother me at all. But now, you know, more neutral ground. So I guess we'll see. Mm. And so, speaking of Vegas, then we get to uh, the last pay per view of the year. What an eventful weekend for the both of you. Uh, first, I'd love to ask you about the press conference because one thing that I actually think, I said this at the beginning of the show that I don't think has been brought up is that uh, I sort of felt like he kind of threw the first haymaker when he was you know, making jokes about you and your coach. And so when, uh, when you heard that, what was your reaction to that? Before we get to the things that you said, like I, I did feel like he kind of you know, threw that first proverbial punch, if you will. What was your reaction to the stuff he was saying about you and your coach? Yeah, I mean, uh, I honestly don't care what he what he what he's saying. I mean, there's nothing he can say to get to me. There's nothing that's going to trigger me the way he got triggered. It, it's not going to happen. It just, and then this is a fight game. All is fair, love and war. You have to be ready for that. And I start out like every other press conference and every every other time I interact with my opponents. They are not my enemy. They are not my friend. They are my opponent. They are an object in my way to my goal. And that is the only thing I see. So I always, and I respect every single man that steps into the octagon in front of millions of people. It takes a lot of balls. So when I, when I, um, I started my, press, if we go watch that press conference, I started uh, 100% respectful towards Sean. And uh, I'm confident in myself. I'm never belittling my opponent. I'm always talking about me because that's what it's about. I'm concentrating on me, not on him. And uh, he threw actually threw a jab pretty early on in the in the in the conversation in the in the press conference, and I just let it slide. I said, "Oh well, let's go." And you no, know, I answered the questions that were asked. And then uh, when I feel like when he didn't get the attention of the crowd, when he didn't get the crowd going like he usually does, because that's what he has. He has that outrageous um, things that he says. He says outrageous stuff. He he rambles. He just screams over everybody, and that's that's how he that's that's how he operates. So when he didn't get that. He, he sort of in that uh, press became relevant to a sense. And uh, then he said, no, listen, um, we don't have to, we're not going to be friends. And then, then he, then he came at me and I'm never going to let that slide. I'll always respect you. If you respect me, I'm going to treat you the way you treat me. I'm not going to be bullied. Does he think he can bully me? That's that ain't happening. I've never been bullied and I won't be bullied. I'll never, I'll never let that slide. So he tried to, to, to bully me and I, I gave him some of his own medicine. I just did it better. And so obviously that that really did seem to upset him as we learned uh, later on. Do you do you regret anything that you said about his past? No. I don't regret anything. Uh I said what I said. I didn't go out there and plan what I said, but listen, if you're dishing it out, you're gonna get it. And I'm not gonna keep on hammering on it. Like I said, I stand by what I said. I did not joke about it. What happened was fact. I stated fact. I didn't joke, he joked about it. In, in previous interviews, he joked about um, uh, all of that. I didn't joke about it. I stated the facts. And um, the yeah, it obviously had a massive effect on him. And I won't be hammering on that because it's not necessary. The result of I got the results that I wanted. I'm not, I don't need to hammer on one thing. 
you know, obviously uh, it's terrible that it happened to him, but it did. And, you know, don't project onto others what, what you don't want uh, to happen to you. That's, it's, it's, uh, that's how, that's the way it is. Uh, he disrespected me, disrespected my coach, and I won't let that slide. So take that. And um, now we're on a, on a clean page. We start over. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's strictly business. It's never personal. Nothing's personal. I have no, no animosity towards him. I said what I said. Um, what happened happened. There's no animosity for, from my side. At least I'm here to do my business. I'm here to, to, to win a fight. I saw you say in an interview recently that you didn't see the clip with him and Theo Vaughn talking about his past. I'm wondering if you have seen it since. And uh, if so, what was your reaction? Not necessarily to him getting emotional, but him saying like, hey, there are certain things that you shouldn't talk about and there are certain lines you shouldn't cross when he has been the one crossing a lot of those lines, not only with opponents, but, uh, you know, with the likes of Ian Gary, people who he's not fighting, who aren't even yeah. in his weight class. So your 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 reaction when at least you may have heard, read, or seen any of that? Yeah, I mean, I watched some clips on it. I didn't watch the whole interview. Like I said, uh, watching grown man cry is not really my, my genre. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I think what I said is I'm glad he got it out. I hope it's the end of it. That. You no, know, uh, he had a lot to say about Khalil Roundtree crying, and he said how um, how weak of a man, beta male uh, Khalil was for crying. He did the exact same thing, just on a bigger stage, and uh, you know, not talking about somebody's wife. I'm assuming because he has somebody in his life now that became a, a thing hmm. where uh, he didn't care about Ian Gary's wife when he when he said what he said, and um, it wasn't his place to say anything. I mean. But whatever, I mean, he is what he, the, the, that's the one thing in this whole situation where I feel Sean, um, whatever he says, I, it doesn't matter because he's a he's a funny character. I, I actually quite enjoy him. Is the hypocrisy is what 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 made me that was the one area where people could lose respect for Sean Strickland because he's always unapologetically himself. But as soon as he got his own medicine, as soon as he was on the receiving end for the very first time when I got on that mic. We saw him back battle and trying to play the sympathy. God, he wanted he wanted sympathy. He was he was he was acting like he had that victim mentality immediately. Can't do that if you if you if you say the things you say. Talking about people who can't dodge buses on a, somebody who died, a fighter who died. So is that not over the line? So you you, Mister Moral Compass, doesn't decide where the line is. He doesn't have the right to decide where that line is. And now all of a sudden the line is where he wants it to be. No, I don't think so. And uh, that's that's what I said. The, the one thing where, like I said, I have a lot of respect for him. I'm actually quite fond of of, of uh, Sean Strickland. The one thing is the hypocrisy that that you can go and say, listen, this is this is not the way to go. You stick to your gun. Stick to trying to be a tough guy. That's that's what you can do. Are are you in the position that you're in now? Do you think that you are in his head under his skin? Um, yeah, probably. Well, I, 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 I like to think so, but it's not something I consider. It's a, it's part of the warfare 100%, but I don't think, like, that's what I said. I think uh, he reacts. He, he's, he, he's an emotional guy when it comes to mindset. He's going he's gonna to react the way he's going to react in the moment. He doesn't, um, maybe now, it, I think the people around him have to say, listen, we have to, be calm. You can't go with that hatred and people saying, oh, he's in shape now because he's so motivated. If you're motiv by, motivated by anger, your demise is around the corner. That is that is fact. So, um, yeah, I think uh, maybe he was, but I think um, I think uh, he had some time to cool down. Maybe it's over, but I guess we'll see uh, on Saturday night and I'll I'll see how he behaves at the, at the press conference. Um, so when they had you guys sitting right next to each other at the event, what was your reaction? Were you surprised? Who was there first, you or him? Uh, no, he was there first. So uh, I, I arrived there as the main, just before the first main card fight. And uh, obviously I get, I get my ticket and I, I look at the, the seating numbers. So I, st I see him where the fighters sit. I see him on the other side of the, uh, of the road, like the complete opposite side of where I am. And I started looking for my seat number, me and my, my teammate around us. And the security guy goes, no, you're on that side. <laughs> and I think that's very interesting because I immediately knew they're probably not going to set us together. And uh, teammate, I remember my teammate saying, listen, 
Uh, he, 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 this I know how this is ending. He says, it's not even a teammate. It's like a team manager. And he says, I said, just relax. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to be fine. It's, we're professionals. We're not going to fight each other. <laughs> but And he says, I've been, I know this situation. He's like, yeah, yeah, you're not going to do it. It's going to be fine. But he... He kind of knows when when it comes to to my career, when it comes to fighting, for for that time being, one hundred percent, I'm there. I'm in that mindset, but I'm stronger mentally than that. The fighter will show up when he needs to, and uh, yeah, obviously when we we sat next to each other, it was I didn't even consider it to be honest with you. When I saw him; he was two, uh, just one row in between us, literally right in front of me. So I mean, I was looking at the back of his head. But, I mean, didn't bother me at all. I was there for two, three fights before. Uh, obviously, when the cameras came on, that's where things went south because you know, me knowing that the Vegas crowd is going to be uh, booing me, I had to, uh, had to uh, make a plan, and I just booed with them towards him. And then, you know, he was, there, he was ob- obviously feeling that anger from the press conference, so that was in his head for sure. And uh, there was some back and forth, and you know, what happened happened. But, no, it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't anything that stuck with me. It was a, it was a good old scrap. We, what happened happened. Nobody got injured. Thank, um, thank you for that. And uh, the fight's continuing. That's the most important part. Is that we still get to to fight because if things went in a certain way, the fight could have been in jeopardy. And luckily, that didn't happen. Before that little interaction on camera, did you guys say anything to each other? Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of banter. Uh, you know, when uh, as soon as he turned around, I said something. He said something. Nothing specific. It was more in a sense of I said something like, "Yeah, what are you going to do?" or any, something in that in that sense. And he says, "You want to do this?" And I said, "Yeah, absolutely." And uh, yeah, it was something in, along those lines. Were you surprised that he ultimately did what he did? Uh, not too surprised. Not too surprised. But it was a good test. That's why I said I got respect for him being a being the man that he says he is, because that was a, I was, I was calling him out. I was, I was telling him, if you want to do it, do it. Like, what are you going to do? Mm. And, um, you know, and that, 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 that's something you have to respect. That's something you have to respect. Cause I was at that stage, I was trying to get under his skin at, uh, when we were there. And, um, yeah, like I said, like the game plan went perfectly. <laughs> What about the fact that he asked Gilbert's kids to, and wife to move out of the way? I mean, that was pretty. That was pretty nice of him, no? Yeah, no, that's super nice, super nice. Like I said, I don't think he's a bad guy at all. I don't think Sean Strickland's a bad guy. I think he's a. I think I, I really don't. I don't think he's a, a bad guy. And uh, yeah, so I mean, yeah, he, he does. Like all of us, we have our flaws, but yeah, he's not a bad guy. Did you consider? Any sort of actions against him afterwards? Uh, I think I saw something where the UFC asked you if you wanted to press charges. Is that true? Did you consider anything? Yeah, I mean, uh, Dana, then they came over and said, listen, he's backstage, the cops have him. Or, yeah, he's, but I mean, what? There's no way, way, <laughs> why, why? There's no way that would have ever even occurred to me. I, I couldn't believe it. I said, no, 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 no. no. Getting into Canada is hard. Yes. You know, for us, especially from South Africa, like the the visa process is is, is, is very due <laughs> diligently, but you know there was no way, and they they obviously things work a little bit different in 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 the United States is in in South Africa. In South Africa, that's a good old Friday night out, and not even a very good one. People <laughs> would be very disappointed if that was the fight they saw in a in a bar. But um, it, it never even occurred to me. No, that's that's. If you if you you know you live by the sword, die by the sword. If you uh, you know if you're looking for trouble and you get it, don't be go making, don't be don't go and you know crying to mama and looking for to make to open up a case or to uh, sue anybody. If you're looking for trouble and you get it, uh, you know it's your bed. And you made it. Uh, do you acknowledge the fact that now the fight feels bigger? That there's more attention on the fight? I think more people are looking forward to the press conference, to your face-offs. Do you feel like that interaction, as ugly as it may have been, um, you, you know, like that the byproduct is good, uh, ultimately from a business standpoint? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think um, the hardcore MMA fans definitely knew this fight and know this fight is going to be 
something. It's going to be a fan-friendly fight. It's going to be a banger. Everybody knows that. But then your people more, a lot of people, I think, in terms of entertainment value, want the drama. They want, They don't necessarily know the sport in a way where they know my style, his style, that is going, that there's no way this is not an explosion. But uh, they want that drama. And like I said, I don't do fake drama. I don't do fake hype. I don't do fake beef. I myself, you respect me, I respect you. And um, when this happened, I think we got the, the everybody that was on the on the fence about is this a good fight? Is it not? We convinced them that that it is, and I think uh, no, it definitely is great for the numbers. Not in the best way to 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 get the to get their promo going, but yeah. it is what it is. It's the fight game at the end of the day. We are we are fighters, and uh, yeah. sometimes things uh, things happen. How do you expect the fight to play out? Uh, the result. No, just like what, what kind of, you know, he kind of shocked us with the way in which he fought Izzy, right? Uh, we, we saw a different kind of stand-up from him. Uh, the defense was very impressive. He was very measured. He was very controlled. He almost knocked him out in the first round. Are you expecting to see a similar style from him on, on Saturday? Yeah, I don't think he shocked me with, the, with his style. I just, um, he fought the way he fights and he did it extremely well. He did it really, really well. And uh, he shocked me with... Uh, with his performance, definitely. But that's his style. He's always fought that way. He just did it very effectively. And yeah, I, for his part, that performance wouldn't have been enough to fight, to beat. No way. He fought an incredible fight, but that's not a, a, a performance that's going to beat me. And uh, listen, Sean Strickland is one hell of a fighter. I think this fight is going to be incredible. And yeah, I know people are saying, yeah, he's got this output. I have the highest significant strike rate as far as I know in the middleweight history and people talk about his output and look at the finish rate so there's a lot of things that are, that are playing in my favor yes yes he has had more five rounders but before the UFC I had a lot of five rounders and um, never went the distance though but you know that's a that's a that's the thing. That's that's all things that are in my favor. And just the fact that he is somebody that's super composed and he fights his style and he forces people to fight his style. And I won't let that happen. And that, he does that very, very well. And that's why he's the champion of the world. He deserves it. He didn't get the well, he got the shot. He's lucky that he got the shot, but he deserves to be champion. He fought, he showed up, he showed all the grit. He traveled halfway across the world to go out there to enemy territory and he be one of the best motorways to ever do it in spectacular fashion. So he deserves it and all the praise that he's getting. But now he has to deal with me. Fascinating options post-fight for you. I'm just wondering, all goes your way? All goes well for you on Saturday? Joe Rogan asks you, who do you want next? Who do you want to defend this against? Do you have an answer? No. I don't think about any other person than Sean Strickland. I don't think about... Any day after the fight night, I don't think in a day of my life after this fight, because I'm winning that title or I'm, or I'm dying while I'm trying to win that belt. But my mind doesn't go past Saturday night. My mind is thinking of becoming a world champion, and that's it. And the rest will figure out. Maybe I'll, I'll know the answer as soon as I'm standing there with the, with the belt around my waist. Uh, do you think that they'll try to do the Hamzad fight, or do you think, given the history with Izzy, they'll try to do Izzy? Yeah, I think uh, both make sense for them. I think uh, for them it would be either or, in in my honest opinion. And uh, do I think Hamza deserves it? No, definitely not. Just 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 in terms of fighting at middleweight, fighting a uh, uh, is he a good fighter? Yes, Hamza is a great fight. He's a great fighter. He just uh, hasn't deserved. He doesn't deserve that that title. Fight. Um, so, I mean, but that's my opinion, so it doesn't really matter. So the UFC wants to do it, that's what they're going to do, and then uh, I'll be happy to do it. Uh, two last um, oh, sorry. Like I said, like I said, I don't, I don't, I really do not care. They can give me whoever they want, but according to me, there is no life after Saturday. I'll figure that out as soon as my hand gets raised. Do you allow yourself to dream about what it will feel like with the belt around your waist that moment when you realize the dream? Do you, do you allow yourself to even go there? 
Yes, absolutely. I've been doing that for the past 10 years, uh, at least once a day. Some days about a hundred times, but I can't wait. It's, 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 I know, and I know I've visualized a lot of things in my career that played out exactly the way it did. And every single time it happens in reality, it's just even, it, it, it's unexplainable. And I, I, I can't wait to have that feeling. I can't wait to have that battle around my waist. And just curious, what kind of energy are you expecting from him at the press conference? And, uh, do you have any other sort of, uh, you know, other ammunition ready to go just in case it gets too personal? Yeah, I guess uh, I'll see when it when it happens. But I mean, I I think I'll I'll be ready for whatever he throws at me. I, I'm not when I go to these press conferences. I never plan on oh I'm going to say this, say that. That's not that's not the way. It's it's about you know it's it's on the spot and you know I think it's going to be a lot more civil. But maybe he comes out guns blazing. Who knows? But I think it'll be more civil because in my mind the first that, that press conference was joking around. That was that was that was me having a lot of fun. I'm not in that zone anymore. I'm in. I'm in the fight zone now. I'm ready to go. I'm here to win a world title. I'm not here to make jokes. I'm here to be a world champion. Can't wait. Good luck to you, Drikus. Thank you very much for the time. Appreciate it, and uh, looking forward to this very much. And enjoy Canada. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, there he is, DDP Drikus Duplessis. Uh, what a fight that is going to be. What a scene that's going to be in Toronto. And uh, yeah, that's that's one of those press conferences that I imagine a lot of people are going to uh, be watching and looking forward to. And let's see what it turns into after the first press conference uh, the night before 296 and then what happened at 297. Someone who was in the midst of all of that, if you look at the footage, he was sitting right there. And in fact, I didn't plan this back to back like this, but wouldn't you know it, uh, it worked out this way is our next guest. He is returning to action in February in Mexico City. Uh, it is February 24th, to be exact. The UFC finally coming back to Mexico, and they couldn't come back to Mexico without Brandon Moreno. It was supposed to be against Amir Albazi. It's now going to be against Brandon Royville. Here he is, the one and only Brandon Moreno, kind enough to join us. Yes. <laughs> How are you, my What's friend? What's up, Ariel? How you feel, my man? I'm doing great. How are you? Love it, man. Amazing, you know, enjoying the the cold weather of Dallas right now. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about this cold? Man, it's insane because <laughs> it's not just the, the, the cold weather, it's very windy, so it's even cold. Is everyone very sad over there in Dallas because the Cowboys lost last night? You heard about this, the football team? <laughs> I don't even know, man. <laughs> that is so American. Actually, yes. it, it's funny because I, I when I was training in Kansas, uh, someone gave me a, 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 a Chiefs, yes. Chiefs uh, t-shirt, and sometimes I'm wearing it here, and everybody's like, ah, you you are a, a, a Chiefs uh, <laughs> fan? It's like, I don't even know. I don't even know. I mean, I'm just, I'm just using this. I'm just wearing this. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's ask to somebody tonight in the last training today. Um, so are you uh, are you feeling like that? Is, is Dallas feeling like home? Does it feel like the right place for you? Are you feeling more settled there? Man, I, I feel amazing. I mean, obviously, uh, I have everything in, in, in Las Vegas. I have my my home, my my, my wife, my daughters. Uh, but here is an amazing place to be. Just focus on the uh, on the on the next fight. Uh, for this MMA, it's, it's been an amazing place uh, for me uh, to put everything uh, in order, you know, talking about safe, talking about my training partners. Uh, I, I feel amazing right here. Do you miss your family? Of course, man. I mean, that's that's why I'm doing all of this this thing because I I I want to give them a little bit more in this life, but I'm I have to still uh, doing some sacrifices for them. So they they understand they they understand, but at the same time, of course, by my side, I very uh, I'm a little bit uh, uh, sad, you know. I miss them. Uh, how long will you go without seeing them? So uh, I I went I came to to Dallas uh, a few a few months ago and I stayed here for a few weeks. Obviously, I don't have a, a, a any any fight coming soon. But I was just trying to train with the with the team, get, get, getting some new knowledge. So I spent some time here, and then right now uh, I'm two weeks here, and then I'm going to do uh, to do uh, some uh, training in Mexico. 
Uh, and that's it. So I'll be like a few weeks out of my home uh, at the end of the of this training camp. Okay. Um, by the way, before we get further into your fight, I was just talking about how you were sitting right there when Drickus and Sean were fighting at uh, 296. What, <laughs> what was your uh, perspective of that craziness? That, that was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> you were right there in the middle. Man, so I don't know if it's because I mean, you you have you have this feeling when some some uh, when two guys doesn't like to, uh, each other and they start they're so close so close. I just remember I I I turned my face to my to my wife just to tell her like, hey, let's move a little bit. <laughs> when I when I but when I say let's move a little bit, trying to trigger the jump uh. and everything start to to happen. I don't even knew what's happening. I just trying to protect my wife and that and that's it. But then a bodyguard start to run and he pushed me and just I just fall. Uh, I, what's funny? <laughs> did you did you get hurt? Nah, nothing. Not, not just I was just enjoying the moment, man. Crazy. This those kind of, of moments that I mean, just post. I, I just post a, a, a meme next day and I got a lot of reactions for that. But I mean, you know. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, you you you're always doing everything with a smile, and uh, I would imagine you were smiling when you got the call to fight in Mexico City, right? What was your reaction when you finally got the call that you can go back home and fight there? Man, I mean, obviously, I was I, I was very excited. Uh, all the the Mexican market will uh, we uh, we are pushing too much to 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 go back to Mexico with the UFC and make another event there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we, we wanted to do on a pay per view, but. Uh, uh, Alexa fall and she she broke uh, her hand and uh, you know what's a it's a hard it's a hard moment for us because uh, Jair lost lost the title I lost the title so but I mean a, a, a fight night with us uh, it's gonna be uh, amazing I I hear the the ticket sales it's it's been like really good so I'm expecting a full arena that night. So when UFC called me for, for the opportunity, I was very excited. I was very excited because uh, I I think uh, I, I I mean I don't think I, I really want to to put my 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 hand uh, uh, my raise my hand that night because my last my last two fights I, I don't I wasn't like I wasn't uh, my opportunity <laughs> to do it. You mean your last fight, like meaning the fight in July or the last time you fought in in Mexico? Mexico, right, uh, yeah. and obviously, obviously uh, my last my last fight. But the first time when I fought there, I was 2017 against Sergio, and I lost. Uh, the other the the second time was 2019 against Askarov. I you know even when I when I think I, I won, uh, the judges gave me the the draw. So yes, I definitely I, I wanna I wanna raise my hand uh, in Mexico City in the arena with all with all the people around. Is is there more pressure that you feel fighting at home? Do, does it feel a lot different than say fighting in Las Vegas? A lot of attention, and now you're so much more famous too. Maybe, man. Maybe yes, but the the kind of good thing about it is like I always live in pressure. You know, like I I have like two years in a row, like always like fighting for titles, fighting for something huge. You know, for example, this fight. I mean, I know if I win this fight, the possibility to fight for the title again is is huge. So I mean the pressure, the pressure is always there. So I'm just trying to be focused and and uh, and be in a small circle. Uh, we just focus on the training and that's it. Have they told you you win this fight, you'll get a title shot? I mean, not not directly. Uh, uh, but I mean, I don't see another guy in, in uh, closer than me. You know, even even for example, this last last weekend. Uh, I think if Manel K uh, uh, will do a, a, a nice job against Mateusz Nikolaou, he he could uh, he could uh, say I'm here for the for the uh, for the title for the opportunity. But he he missed weight, so uh, Royal even Royal he lost for the title uh, recently. So I don't know. I think it's I, it's very clear I, I'm the next for the title. But uh, I have to make a statement. What do you think of Manel Cape? It's always a lot of drama with him, huh? Man, I understand, kind of. You know, I mean, it's <laughs> there's not, no it's, no drama with you. I don't like it, man. I, I don't like to to use social media and start to man. It's just, it's just annoying for me. But I I understand why other people do it. You know, they try to get some extra attention and extra money, extra diffusion, what diffusion or whatever. 
So it's fine. It's whatever. I mean, he, Manuel Kev is always like kind of cool with me when when I see see him in the, uh, the PI. I mean, he's not doing like nothing crazy. Okay. Um, well, you were supposed to fight Amir Albazi, and then uh, he had to withdraw, and now you're fighting Brandon Royval. Which matchup did you like better? Do you have a preference? Uh, not really. You know, obviously, I, I'm always interested to fight with different uh, opponents. Um, Amir Al- Albazi is a guy who who was doing an amazing job, but he he said he got an injury in his neck, so I mean he. He had to pull off, pull off of the fight, uh, and now I have Brandon Royval, who is a is a different body. But uh, but I don't care, man. I'm I'm, I'm just excited and and, and just want to get a new challenge uh, because I mean, just remember I I had four fights in a row with the same guy, and then when you change the opponent, the opponent was like a uh, a guy who I fought before uh, against him, you know, in the past. So, you know, I just tried to get a new challenge. Even um, right, I, I fought against him in 2020. So, I don't know. I just tried to, to to get fun in this. Isn't it crazy? I mean, even with Kai Car France, you had fought him too. Like, so, always so many rematches with you. So, I'm guessing Albazi was fun for you because he was just a fresh guy, right? Yeah, and, uh, I mean, ex- man, exactly. You 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 say, uh, you say it uh, perfectly. It's a new body, uh, a, a new uh, a new challenge for me. Now a high rival. I, ha- I fought against him in the past, uh, but yes, I don't know. It's, it's maybe it's, you know it's something with the division. No, in the last in the last year we we are watching new talents, you know, new young fighters coming and trying to get the opportunity. But I think the the top five is very very is very close. It's, very, it's a very exclusive uh, top five in the flyweight division. So that's why. Um, last time we saw you obviously was in July and I'm just wondering in the aftermath of that fight against Pantoja, how, how you dealt with the loss? How did you feel afterwards? How difficult was it for you? Yeah, man, I, I feel this, I felt in, uh, in that moment a little bit disappointment because I really believe I, I can, I can beat a uh, Pantoja, but, uh, so he made a really good kind of game plan, just holding the, the positions and just going for the decision and win, which is, I mean, I don't know. That is, it's a little bit frustrating because you want to make, at least me, <laughs> I want to make something special for the, for the people. But at the same time, if, if you if you want to win, uh, you can do uh, whatever is legal uh, to do it, you know, to get the, the, the victory. So he did it, he did it uh, well. Um, and he did it uh, well in, in his last fight against uh, Brandon Royval. So I just want to uh, make sure, uh, make a statement in, the, in, in, in my next fight against Brandon Royval and, and get the opportunity for the title next. Uh, what did you think of Royval's performance against uh, Pantoja in December? He's, he's coming off that fight not that long ago. Yeah, I mean, he, he was a little bit short in, 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 in some transitions and uh, uh, Pantoja took the, the advantage, you know, he held the positions, he, con- he controlled him and when he had the opportunity, uh, he uh, made some damage. Uh, uh, and yes, I mean, that, I don't have an, another opinion about it. Like, maybe uh, another game plan, I don't know, for Royval. But uh, at the end of the day, we 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 have to respect uh, Pantoja's ability to to uh, control their opponents. I saw Royval tweet that you guys are going to fight for the flyweight BMF. Was he just joking? Let's go! Why not? <laughs> okay, I, I guess he's just joking. If you don't know about it, hey, that's very cool. Let's. I, I'm gonna send a message to 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 Hunter and Dana to see if we can do that. <laughs> Look at you! You could just you could just demand things from Hunter and Dana. That's the kind of star that you are now. No, I mean, no demanding nothing. Never. I You're mean, a big star. I'm. I'm always, I'm always very respectful, man. A lot of people tell me that, but no, I'm just trying to be respectful with everybody. But that, that sounds good. I, I mean. To me, the BMF title is kind of weird because I'm not the, uh, 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 <laughs> a BMF like that. I think but the nice if, if we talk, NMF, nicest MFR. Maybe you know, <laughs> and and you know, rival uh, start to start like joking with this like a, a gangster style. But man, we are going we are going to Mexico. He can start. He can. Uh, make jokes about it because they're going to get killed. <laughs> yes. It's a whole different world. Uh, by the way, I saw, yeah. speaking of being a big star, I saw you doing some uh, modeling stuff with uh, Puma and this magazine. Look at you. You're, you're, you're a real model. How about that? Man, 
when I when I take shower, I'm handsome. I promise. <laughs> look at these shots. We're showing the shots right now. You modeling for the, you look like a real superstar really? here. Yes, it's amazing. You, you're gonna show show me something? Oh, we're showing it on our screen while while you're talking ah, right now. Oh, man, I'm a model, man. Did you like I that? I told you, man. I'm just trying to get some money for my family. <laughs> Is that a big magazine? No, it's, Noir magazine? It's Is that a, a big? It's a, I think it's a it's a it's a big magazine in Mexico. Yeah. So man, I'm just uh, I'm just um, doing new things, and you know, it's a kind of uh, uncomfortable for me because it's it's completely new and and it's not kind of my job. But I'm just trying to enjoy it, and I'm very grateful with with Puma Mexico to to give me to give me those kind of opportunities uh, uh, to to do something different. And I'm just trying to enjoy it. You know, it's kind of uncomfortable, but at, at the same time, I'm just trying to to be nice there. It's great. I love it. Um, and you look very comfortable while you're doing it, if I may say so myself. Thank you. Uh, can I ask? Uh, two months after your fight was the Noche UFC card. Uh, was it yeah. uh, was it hard for you to not be a part of that? Yeah, I mean, so uh, in, in five week in in my last fight in five week, there a lot of people asking like, "Hey, it's like any possibility to you to fight there?" Like, man, I don't think so. You you never know. You you never know what can happen in the middle of the fight. You know the injuries, the, the injuries. Um, and I mean, after the fight, I I I hurt my my right hand. So you never know. It was very close, and man, uh, I was part of the of the of the crowd that night. The people, the response, uh, uh, unbelievable. Um, a lot of people there, uh, a lot of fans enjoying the the event and uh, supporting the Mexican fighters. So uh, I'm very excited to see the future. You never know. Maybe I can I can fight for the for the title in the next not too Oh yeah, and they're gonna do it at the Sphere. You saw this place, the Sphere, in September. It's yeah, incredible. I mean, I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy. I, don't, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine. Maybe they can put, like, some uh, images of uh, of the fighters going to the octagon in the night. And I don't know. That's, I, I, I'm very, I feel very interested to see what, how, um, how UFC manage all this production. So is the dream scenario for you win in February and fight for the belt in September? Or maybe you, you, you fight in between there, win the belt, and then defend the belt? Or is that, is that too many fights? What do you think? What's the dream scenario for you? The dream scenario is to fight in Notre Dame UFC. Okay. okay? Um, but let, let's see what, what happened um, before that um, because I hear uh, Pantoja wanted, wanted to fight in in, um, in May in, in Brazil, but I don't I don't know if that's a little bit as, uh, soon for me. So I don't know, man. I have a I have a really a good opponent in front of me with, with Royal. I I have to be very focused on him. Yeah. Uh, because I know he will be like very motivated, like with nothing to lose, everything to win. Uh, so I have to be focused on him and 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 then uh, see what is next for me. Will you watch uh, the first fight between you guys a lot, or do you think he has improved a lot since then? Different fighter. I mean. Uh, for sure, I, I I've been watching uh, our fight uh, in 2020. Um, I believe he improves a lot uh, uh, after that fight, so he's a completely different opponent. But I mean, it's the, it's the same with me. Okay, uh, even with that, uh, I have to put attention in in every single single aspect of of, of our fight uh, in that moment and and right now with with our our last fight. Uh, and that's it. But yes, for sure. Okay. And just curious, how far in advance will you go to Mexico? You know, with the uh, elevation and all that stuff, how many weeks will you be there before the fight? Yeah, maybe maybe three, four weeks. I mean, I have the experience to to, to fight in Mexico City, so I, I, I failed at the, the, the altitude before. So I think uh, that will be, will be uh, enough. Okay. And, and will your whole family be there? No, man, that's that's why I I, I, I told you it's gonna be a, a hard training camp for me, and and maybe a lot of people doesn't know about about this, but I mean, fighting in Mexico City is not even uh, close to me because I I born and raised in Mexico, but I born in Tijuana. It's it's kind of far from the capital of the country, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, all this this the sacrifices, the flights to to let my my wife and my daughters along. It's, it's, it's hard, but they understand. They, they understand the sacrifice I, I have to do right now. Okay. Well, I wish you the best, Brandon. Uh, looking forward to your return. Uh, happy that you're fighting in your in your home country. 
Very exciting stuff. And I hope that you get a hero's welcome when you uh, walk out there. Maybe with a luchador mask. Maybe something like that. What do you think? You never know. Some, something like like Goyito Perez, maybe yes, in the past. Yes, I love that. That, that, that could be a, a possibility. <laughs> and any more wrestling for you? Any more AAA Lucha Libre for you? After the fight, if they, if, if they invite me again, I'm open to do it. That would be great. I love it. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> Good luck to you and uh, looking forward to it. Awesome, Ariel. Have a nice day, man. You too. Take care. There he is, uh, Brandon Moreno, the assassin baby, uh, returning to action on February 24th, the UFC's uh, first event in Mexico uh, since 2019. Who headlined that card? Yair Rodriguez versus Jeremy Stevens. Remember that fight ended unceremoniously and they had to run it back just a month or so later. Um, it will be their sixth trip to Mexico City and uh, it's a solid one, especially the top two fights, Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Royval. Co-main event, Yair Rodriguez, El Pantera against Brian Ortega. Haven't seen those guys in a bit, especially Ortega. I am looking forward to that. And um, yeah, speaking of a fight that ended unceremoniously, you remember that one in uh, July of 22. I believe GC, GC, you were at that, right? That was in uh, Long Island. Yeah, I was there. Main event. Still got the poster hanging in my room. Oh, wow. Is that a nice yeah. one? Uh, it's an all right poster, but it was my first UFC event ever. That was your ever. first one? Yeah, first one in person. So, yeah, I haven't had to get the poster. Got it framed and everything. Wow. Signed? Yeah. No, not signed, but I do look at it a lot, and I'm like, wow, what a bummer of a main event. So, hopefully, uh, yeah. Brady and Luke is, is better when we go to that. Well, uh, I appreciate, by the way, the James Cook jersey. That's James Cook, right? Yes, sir. James yeah, Cook. Dog. Yeah, big one. Uh, four here. Keep looking at the clock. A little bit over an hour away. Kind of rolling through this show here. <laughs> we're moving. We're moving nicely. Man. Yeah. I got the Zubaz on too. Oh, you do? Let me see. Oh yeah, ripping the Zubaz. There it is. Ah, uh, full fledged. The... Should we get a table out? Oh, yeah, I'll jump through it if they win. You know. Wow. There we go. Yeah, I mean, these were from my, my days as a Bills fan. You know, I'm obviously a retired Bills fan. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm you're back on the wagon? I'm, I'm here for the team. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm back on the wagon until at least the AFC Championship game. So you got me for, you know, two games. Well, you keep saying that, you know, you'll you'll root for the Ravens, I suspect, because your roommate is from Baltimore. Die hard. Die hard. Uh, Die but what hard. if the Texans have something to say about that? Yeah, Stroud boys up, I guess. Uh, then I'll keep cheering for the Bills. Oh, wow. Okay. And, yeah. uh, you know, speaking of wagons, as you know, no one circles the wagons. Like the Buffalo like the Bills. That's Buffalo freaking Bills. Oh, what are the scenes? What are the scenes? I mean, what a day. What a day, gents. Um, I'm just I'm just buzzing over here. Good stuff from DDP. Enjoyed that. And uh, good stuff from Brandon. Good stuff from... Uh, from Yuri, from AJ, Yuri, the, whole, the whole squad. Man. The whole lot, huh? The whole lot. Uh, was it good stuff for the Parlay boys? You know, unfortunately, it wasn't. Uh, you know, first first one of the year. I guess we just had to shake off the rust. We got a little too comfortable over the holidays. We saw that being green in the plus money, and uh, yeah, I mean, we got. Was that a Taylor Swift money. reference? Shake off the rust. Shake it off. I mean, it might as shake well. Shake it off. Nah, nah, I feel like that's that's zero for two, zero for three now on me what? making uh, me making references to things I'm not making references to. Nah, you know, I was just curious because everyone's so crazy about her doing the dance thingy over there. Oh, the swag surfing, and then someone yeah. said it was whitewater rafting. <laughs> Why is everyone so mad about this? Jeez, the things that people get mad about is just crazy. Like, uh, okay. oh my god, they have to they have to sign up for Peacock. Try being. I got oh so much hate for this. Try being an a, 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 an MMA, a combat sports fan. By the way, all they were doing was exposing the fact that they aren't Prem fans like us or WWE fans. You don't have Peacock. Where have you been? Exactly. You know, if, if you support the Prem, you got Peacock here in the states. That's for sure. Yeah. Anyway, please. Sorry. Uh, that's about all I had to say. I mean, me and uh, you know, me and Rick took care of business naturally. Unfortunately, a, a stumble out of the blocks for for Juliana and, and Mysterious Frank. But mm. uh, I think we bounced back and can live to fight again. We sh we certainly do, and we're still up. Uh, we're still up all time, which is which is great. Well, I do have some breaking news for all of oh, you. Oh, please! In addition to the breaking news that we had earlier in the day, yes. Uh, for the first time ever, and how apropos is this? 
Uh, we will have a live pick selection from Juliana Pena this Wednesday as she joins the program. <laughs> so she will Let's be... Uh, oh, wow, big you know, stuff. Yeah, she she asked for it, and uh, who am I to turn her down? So we'll have her... Dude, love it. Yeah, make a pick selection on Wednesday. You think she picks uh, Myra or Raquel? I think, I think she picks related to that fight. That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. Who do you think that she picks? Who is the favorite, by the way? Maybe she won't take Arbonne the tonight. Silva. She's like minus 160. Maybe she takes an uh, an under. I could see her. I could see her being like, "I'm taking it by decision. It's going to be so boring." Yeah, yeah. Fight goes the distance, you know that type of deal. You know, breaking the fourth wall for a moment. Uh, I was talking to her, and she's and I said, you know, I, actually in my mind, I, I sort of try to plan these things a few shows in advance. I thought it made all the sense in the world uh, to have her on Monday, meaning next Monday after the card. And she's like, "No one's talking about this fight." I need to build some interest for it, so I need to come on before. I'm like, you know what? I respect that. That's what she does. The hype job, baby. Smart. Even if she has nothing to do with the fight, technically. Um, yeah, but technically, getting but... bigger then helps her. I mean, smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She yeah. knows what she's doing. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Now, does she get the first pick, by the way? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll get first pick. You think so? You don't, you don't think because she's here that it should go to the randomizer? I mean, she technically always gets the first pick anyway because she always sends the message. Before. Right, but now that no. she's live... It would be our honor to give her the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. We don't. I think even more so, she gets. She gets the first about. pick. All right, fair enough. Um, all right, what about the uh, the other picks? Yeah, yeah. First week of the year, and uh, I'm happy to report after losing the first week in 2022, losing the first week in 2023, we have earned ourselves a winning week in the first week in 2024. Uh, oh yeah, that's money, baby. Uh, they do nice on the singles, four and two there. Hit our only parlay of the day. Don't really have to sweat that one on all the unders with Nolan Moto, Wilson Silva, Husper. I think maybe all these ended in the first round. Uh, either way, pretty easy there. And then uh, that wraps us up. Up 2.15 units for the week. Uh, so now we're up 2.15 units for 2024 and uh, hopefully onward and upward. Don't dig ourselves into a, a giant hole like we did last year. Um, so yeah, it feels good. Feels good to be out of the gates, gates nicely. And uh, I do have a couple big hitters. Okay. Uh, to shout out, just just a couple, just two, uh, a special edition one that uh, that I got to get to as well. Can't wait. How are we feeling? How the nerves before old? Uh, uh, well, I'm seeing here. I'm seeing videos here of people uh, trying to get to their seats. Have you seen this? No, it's snow in the way. There's, there's, there's no there's no seat. It's yeah, just it's like just, big piles of snow. Uh, <laughs> They're gonna have to sit on like mountains of snow. Salute to anyone at that game. Oh my. it is I mean it is cold here and we're about what what are we, two hundred miles south of them? Yes. Like we're way south of them and yeah, it's freezing here, so shout out to them. Uh all right, big hitters. Refuse to lose two. Cello Mello. He goes Moda to win in round one. John Silva to win by KO in round one. Worth the wait on the walkout. Bruno Ferreira to win by KO in round one. Parlay them all up. Five dollars into two hundred and eighty-seven plus fifty-six hundred. So shout out to Cello Mello. And then one other one here. Uh, our man, few like C. Lou. Connor Lou goes. Uh, Jim Miller by submission. Great call. Plus three fifty. Magomed Ankalaev to win in round two. Plus three fifty. Hits them both. Turns forty-five dollars into nine hundred eleven and twenty-five. Two great caches there. And then this last one that I have to get to. This It's not a bet per se, uh, but it's a big hitter in our hearts. And that is our man, Jed Mashu, getting on the broadcast. Wow. Shouting out. Uh, yeah, no bets so. barred. The flyweight unders. I mean, flyweight unders are back. 2024, 1-0, undefeated. Loved it so much. So we... Uh, we headed over to Kinko's yesterday. We got the bad boy framed. I couldn't tell if that was real or not. Oh, it's real. It's hanging in my house right now. That's a real thing. Yeah, I honestly, I I strongly considered bringing it in the office, but then I was like, man, the frame's pretty large. You know, I don't want to have to get it on the subway and everything like that. So I do have a uh, an in-studio version here. This will, oh. be, this will be hanging in the rafters. Uh, I got to find a place for it. I mean, me and Rick were... We're noticing just how much crap we got back here. I mean, we got a, a dedication to Nicholas Dalby. I mean, we we got Raul, Kai Caro, we got you know Christian Eriksen. I got to find some room for it, but this will be this will be hanging here uh, 
throughout the, the and that's the of. first time any sort of reference on the broadcast. Oh my god, yeah, my jaw dropped when I saw it. It was the last tweet they showed too, as as Josh Van was walking off. Very first fight of the night. Mike Heck was the first tweet they showed. Oh, our wow. very own Mike Heck from MMA fighting. I was like, yeah, Mikey, let's yeah. go. And then, yeah, there it was. Jed Mishu, flyweight under his back at Conor Burks. I was like... Is was, it I mean, possible that there's just no one else tweeting about the first fight? I think that's probably what it was. I A, a couple of people threw out the idea that, that someone got fired for putting that one up. No. Nah. Uh, I mean, oh, made my on. night. That's. I mean, this is crazy, this negativity. What is wrong with you guys? Made my night. It was. Uh, Would it have felt better if it was your own tweet, or does this suffice? Uh, I don't know. I, I usually am not tweeting. I feel like there's, it's formulaic what you have to tweet to get on the broadcast. Uh, that's like kind of why I was surprised they even put this up because, like, to anyone that doesn't listen to No Bets Bar, it doesn't really make any sense. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of shocked that it got up there. That's why it was so funny to me. I mean, typically it's just like the, what an incredible fight. Or, like, great performance by XYZ. Those are the typical ones that get up there. So, yeah, I guess it would have been better if it was my own, but, I mean. It's kind of cool that the show got a shout-out. Yeah, teamwork makes the dream work with Jed, and it was a direct. Flyweight Unders are my baby, so it's like my baby made it yeah. on the air. Rising tides raids all ships. You nailed it, Frankie. You or nailed both. It. That's a good point. Anyway, um, were there other ones? No, that was it. That Where, was, where'd you put that, that picture, by the way? Finale. That was a grand finale. It's right here. I got to figure out where I'm going to nail that bad boy up. No, yeah, no. I mean, like, did you put it up somewhere in your apartment? Oh, in my bedroom right next to the, the <laughs> UFC Long Island poster. Is that true? Is it really? You really went to print it out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a Kinko's right down the way. And where'd you get the frame? Kinko's. They sell frames there? Yeah. Wow. Now it's getting suspicious. Yeah. I didn't know they sell frames at Kinko's. Yeah, and they have the uh, the matting was done for you as well. Yeah. Wow. How long did, did it take? You guys, you guys never been to Kinko's or I mean, what? For full frame service? How does it work? Um, you go up and you say, I want this photo blown up. and you They're like, would you like a custom frame with that? And you're like, yes, I do. No, it wasn't custom frame. They pulled it out of a stack of like 100 of those. They were like, you want this bad boy in a frame? I said, yeah, please. <laughs> and, uh, and, and let me ask you, at any point did the people there say like, why are you framing this? No, they said, holy shit, you made the UFC broadcast? Serious? Wait a minute. Is this Nobet's Bar? Uh, this is Jed Bichu, the whole Hunter Bergs. Yeah, and then I got it for free. Yeah, it was great. I love it. I love it. Um, well, that's big. Congrats. Thanks, man. Congratulations to you, to Jed, well, I mean, the whole uh, show. You want me to pull on this video? You just yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just sly. Oh. Um, <laughs> was there a question mark in there? Uh, I did want to uh, mention, and excited to have one uh, Julian on the show Wednesday, I did want to mention... Uh, as we begin to round third on today's show, the uh, horrific accident that had happened to uh, one of Irish MMA's own. Uh, we found out over the weekend from Liam McCourt and others that Ryan Curtis, uh, who has fought for the likes of Bellator, uh, recently suffered a very serious injury in training. And uh, there's a GoFundMe page up uh, to help support him and his family during this incredibly difficult time. And a lot of people have contributed uh, a lot of people have contributed from the MMA world and from outside the MMA world, and obviously the Irish MMA community, very uh, tight knit. Uh, there's the the URL right there, and uh, if you're just listening to this, it's GoFundMe. Excuse me, GoFund.me slash three one two seven six four D eight three one two seven six four D eight. Conor McGregor uh, gave a very big donation which was obviously very kind of him and very generous of him, uh, posted a quick video about Ryan as well. Here's what Connor had to say. What's up, everyone? I just want to make this video and show support for a young Dublin fighter, Ryan Cordes, who had a uh, very bad injury, a life-changing injury. Just recently, I want to, let, I want to show my support and let, let, let Ryan know and his team know that we're all with him. He has a young family, a young daughter, and uh, there's a GoFundMe set up that you can uh, you can support. And I'd, lo- uh, I'd ask us all to, to, to throw a bit of support behind it, and please. And thank you so much. And God bless you, Ryan. We're all with you, brother. Get better soon, my man. Well done to uh, Connor. Uh, like I said, uh, has been uh, competing for a while. Ryan Chaos Curtis, and uh, it's uh, it's amazing to see the support that he is getting. My my heart goes out to to him and his family. Just 
uh, awful, awful stuff and uh, very, very hard to see and, and, and watch. And I've heard from a lot of the people in uh, Irish MMA, whether it is uh, other fighters or other journalists, it's a, it's a great community. It's, it's obviously one of my favorites, all just saying wonderful things about Ryan and about his family. And you've seen many people come out and support. So just praying for uh, a recovery, a speedy recovery, and uh, wishing him the best. And uh, just a reminder of how, how scary um, and how dangerous this sport is, not only the fights themselves, but the training um, and why we should have the most amount of respect and uh, love and appreciation for the fighters. So our best to Ryan Curtis. And again, there's the GoFundMe link, gofund.me slash 312-764-D8. Uh, you can see it on many people's uh, social media, including Connor's. There's a link there. Uh, also, Liam McCourt, fellow Bellator fighter. Uh, there's a link on her page as well. He has fought for the likes of Cage Warriors and Bama throughout the years and has been a pro since uh, 2011. Uh, so uh, our hearts go out to him and uh, wishing the best to Ryan and his family. Uh, hard to see, hard to see. And the Irish MMA community has uh, dealt with tragedies like this um, just a couple of years ago as well. Um, so just heartbreaking, heartbreaking. And again, a reminder how dangerous, uh, this sport and combat sports in general can be, uh, tough to transition from that, but I think we have, uh, covered everything. My friends, my goal was to go up until like four fifteen or so, and then slide right into the game. But I think we're in a good spot here, guys. Was there anything else that we didn't talk about? I mean, we talked about on Kalayev, we talked about, uh, Jim Miller a little bit, 300. He called out Paul Felder. He called out uh, Matt Brown. I personally like the Paul Felder fight a little bit more, him staying at 155, but it sounds like Paul Felder is having some, you know, some internal debate about that. Uh, either way, he has to be on 300 against someone, and uh, I look forward to that booking. I think it's a fantastic story, 100, 200, 300. Uh, very, very, very impressive stuff, especially when you consider the fact that he had Lyme disease and it seemed like his career was over uh, not that long ago. Uh, Arter Beterbiev was fantastic. And also, I really do love that he's trying to push for Jim F. and Miller or even freaking Miller. Uh, that would be incredible. I like it much more than A10. Um, but they said A10 on the broadcast. Mario Bautista beat Ricky Simone. Impressive win for him. Bruno Fajera beat Phil Haas. That was very impressive as well. Uh, Waldo Cortez Acosta beat Andre Arlovsky. That was a barn burner. Marcus McGee continues to be a great story. Big win for him. And uh, John Silva was quite the revelation. What a post-fight interview that was. Very, very fun. Nicholas Mata was fun as well. And Joshua Van, who uh, will forever... Maybe we need to immortalize Joshua for getting the No Bets Barred boys on the... Uh, on the broadcast. That would be incredible. Uh, maybe we get him a, a little spot. Shout out to our good friends over at uh, Big Shots for the uh, the toys over here. Have the uh, the Bret Hart over there. I don't even know if the GSP one. Oh yeah, it is in, uh, in the frame. Look at that. Yeah. Two Canadian icons. Dare I say three on the screen right here. Yeah. Yeah. There we are. Um, oh, Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Frank got the Bruce Buffer. Show it to us. Show it to us, Frank. There he is. Look at that Bruce Buffer, baby. It actually speaks. <laughs> yes, it's so good. Incredible. Uh, my friends, I uh, you know I have nothing else to say. The Buffalo Bills are about to play in the playoffs. Uh, my hands, my palms are sweaty. Shout out to the Lions and uh, their great fans. But I think it's time to call it a day. What do you guys say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to reroute now and try and race home? I mean, you I kind of feel like I have enough time. As the the initial do, plan yeah. was uh, watch here the first half, but we've got an hour. I might try and make the bold as well. MLK Day, no traffic. Don't oh, jinx Matt, it. I, 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 wish, I really wish New York was like this every day. Oh, it's fantastic. I walk in, I was like, this is just incredible. There's no one here. My wife and kids are actually in the city and talked about coming, but I'm going to tell them not to come and save that for another day. Yeah. All right, on that note, <laughs> let's <Hey, man>. go. <laughs> Uh, what a day. I mean, what more could we offer to you, Anthony Joshua, on the program? Uh, Wednesday's show is going to be great. I already have a few guests booked. I think we'll have uh, some more news to discuss. 
Uh, broke a little bit of news. Uh, broke a bunch of boxing news. I mean, I feel like it's a full holiday uh, Monday for us here. And uh, hopefully uh, by Wednesday, we're, 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 we're looking ahead to the Kansas City Chiefs. And we found out today Brandon Moreno is a big fan of them as well. How about that? Found out a lot. Right, Frank? third down baby let's go oh man there was 17 years no playoffs in buffalo 17 straight years had the longest drought of any north american sports team and then all of a sudden everything changed thanks to andy dalton cincinnati Bengals beating the baltimore ravens yeah that's right lost to jacksonville but they suck, and then we've already, you know, turned things around and uh, have won the AFC's four straight time. I mean, it's a beautiful story. You all know it. I don't even have to go over again and again. Uh, off to Puerto Rico on Wednesday night. I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, going to host the Amanda Serrano presser. I don't know if you want to come, Frank. Absolutely. Uh, Jake Paul's going to be there as well. Maybe I'll get to see the uh, the gym. Maybe I'll get to see where they all uh, train. Uh, but more on that on Wednesday. For now, though, it is time to say goodbye. Thank you once again to AJ, Anthony, Joshua. Uh, thank you to Yuri Prochaska, Drickus Duplessis, Brandon Moreno. Thanks to all of them. Thanks to all of you. Go Bills! Back on Wednesday, same time and place at the Lizzie. Peace. I'm out of here. Mom!